don't think we were talking about yet yesterday or Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday yeah, I know. Was. Time, uh, time flies when you're having fun, Nathan. You know, you could end up down this path of like pursuing freedom from the uh, like freedom of your choices and everything else. And then you could end up right. It's an expensive path or it can be. Yeah. You know, because we're, we're looking at, oh, I need to do this. I need I need land. I need tools. I need learning. You know, all these other things. At, at the very least, it's time consuming. And yeah. so you could end up being less free if you're like trying to do this path and tied to a job or something else that. No, know. I like that you said that. Because uh, some, we, you know, it's the, this is similar to the entrepreneur story where you quit your forty hour job, forty hour a week job to yeah. work eighty hours for yourself. So if you're <laughs> yeah. not, and you might enjoy it, and that's okay. Right. But it, but if you if you quit your job so you could be spend more time with your family, and entrepreneurs who are at eighty hours, well, that's not the point. Yeah. Somebody said to me, uh, they wanted to grow their own food and homestead and market farm because they wanted to um, get away from Monsanto. They didn't want to support that. Just big okay. ag. I said, well, if that's your goal, you can do that by just buying organic. Right. Or going to the farmer's market. <laughs> if that's your goal. So There's a few different paths to dig a little it. bit deeper to get to the goal. So maybe people need help figuring out what their goal is, yeah. really. Yeah, and I think it also changes over time. You know, at first, like, I mean, one of my goals initially was uh, location freedom. It wasn't even have... I think I was always going to, you know, do my own business type stuff, but... The idea that I could work remotely, um, yeah. like that—that that was one goal. And then you know, from there it evolved. Like I was applying for companies where I could work remotely, work from home, not have a commute. Yes. And then, mm -hmm. then it was like, well, I don't just want to work remotely. I want you know, and you start to unpack it, and hmm. you realize, okay, it goes. I actually want full control of my time. Oh, I want full control of what I. I'm working on, you know, and I want to pursue uh. this angle of making money versus that angle. Right. And so you, I think you usually start with one thing, like you're saying, like, okay, I don't want to support Monsanto. Yeah. And then you like start to unpack yeah. the layers and yeah. you're like, oh, it's a bunch of other things. And if people don't dive in and keep asking why and keep peeling it back and it, it changes over time. So you can't be like, you probably can't get it all, all the way there in one yeah. go. But if you don't do that, then you're probably going to find that, you know, you do all this. You're growing your own food. You're running your own business or whatever. You're like, oh, this isn't what I hoped it would be and because you didn't actually yeah. get all the way to what you wanted. The other thing that I'd say in that is to write it down because it mm. changes. Like so many people don't write down what they want or how they're going to get there. And then those who do write it down don't refer back to it. And I think one of the most powerful things is to write whenever you're going to do something, write down what you expect to happen. Wow. And it's a snapshot of this moment in time of your worldview, right? Because you're like, okay, a uh, business example, right? I'm going to launch this YouTube channel. By the end of this year, it's going to go from you know 50 subscribers to 500 subscribers. And who knows what's actually going to happen, but at least you wrote down what you thought was going to happen. Okay. And so then if it only gets to 250, you're like, oh, that wasn't good. Or maybe it gets to 5,000. But I, I come across people who they start something and say it gets to 5,000. They're like, and someone's like, oh, are you happy about that? And they're like, well, I actually don't know. <laughs> you know, like I didn't, you, I didn't write it down. So something we do at work is we always write down what we think is going to happen. Because then you can calibrate, I mean, for a bunch of reasons. You can decide was that good or not. Hmm. But then you can start to calibrate your own ability to predict and your own um like is that did it get you what you wanted i'm yeah. going to start a youtube channel so that i can get to you know freedom or earning money or you know and you yeah, write that down I was say, did is it this get goals me are you setting goals here or is this predicting i think it's both okay yeah but my whole thing is is write down everything and and my my favorite thing about it is referring back to it later and mm. thinking, trying to understand when I achieve that, trying to look back and say, what did I think I would have when I got to $50,000 yeah. a year for my business or the farm at what this I state? What I think I would have. 
Like, what does that actually mean for me? Because it wasn't the number. There's something oh, beyond yeah. it. Yeah. Like, who cares if you make $50,000 a year? What does that mean for you? Yeah. And so... That might mean... You, uh, that, uh, that might mean you get to go out once a week with your wife and right. hire a babysitter. and. Yeah. And so I think, like, writing that down and kind of painting that scene, maybe with homesteading... You're like, oh, I want a homestead. There might be something that you have in your mind that that means. There's some scene. Yeah. Maybe it's you're cooking cooking dinner with your wife. The kids are playing happily in the other room. You know, the vegetables yeah. are from you. Right? There's some scene that you have in your head. And if you're not explicit about that, you might get all the way through and realize you didn't you didn't achieve that. Or your your spouse might have an entirely different scene in their head. <laughs> And that could be, you know. Are you writing this down, like writing it, like on paper? Or are you doing it using an iPod, iPad? Uh, it's a range of things. I, yeah, I have a journal that I keep, like just in a notebook. Um, but then also, uh, I'll write it in the notes app on my phone. Yeah. When, You're on vacation. Did you write anything down today? No, I didn't. I wrote yesterday though. What'd you write? I wrote about after our conversation. Actually, I wrote about how I miss writing. Oh, really? Because we were talking about writing. Yeah. So you wrote about how you miss writing. Yeah, and just, uh, I don't know how much we want to get into it, but... Go um, for it. We got a couple hours. Yeah, we got time. Um, I wrote about, because you were asking me, we are talking about writing a thousand words a day. Yeah. And, and all that, and how I had done it for 600 days in a row and built a whole career off of it. Um, I, I'd say I wrote down, I was talking about two things. Well, overall, I, I'm a I'm a writer. Like that yeah. is uh, my thing, and so I feel like I haven't been doing it. Like I miss that part of myself from building a software company. Yes, I I still do it, but not to the same extent. Um. Uh. Oh, what was it? There was one thing like not making time for it was one thing, but really I realized that I started to set a much higher bar. As I got more of an audience, right, when it went from like mm. 500 people to 1,000 to 10,000 to 25,000 people reading my, my content, um, then I'd start to write something like, oh, this isn't good enough. Yeah. And, you know? And I would shelve it or, or whatever else, especially when trying to come back and restart like a, a writing habit. And that was totally the wrong approach. Like kind of in my, my journaling, <laughs> writing the other day, I just realized... I can still have the bar high on what I publish, hmm. but the bar should be very low on what I write. Yeah, for sure, uh, right? So you were setting the bar high for even what you wrote down privately. Yeah, or even what was worth, and not for like journaling type stuff, but if I was going to write yeah. an essay about like something in business or building an audience, um, yeah. you know, you like you get down a path and you're like, oh, this isn't that good. Yeah, and It's like, well, yeah, of course it's not that good. It's a first draft, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and like I, I was... Reflecting on two essays that I've written, um, one's called The Ladders of Wealth Creation and the other is The Billion Dollar Creator. Uh, the, the quick synopsis is uh, Ladders of Wealth Creation is just a systematic way of building wealth over time and trying to un like unpack all of these principles that um, I've kind of learned over the last 10 years or so. And that, that's what your that's your writing project you're working on right now. That that's one that I've published that I'm really proud oh, of. Sweet. Uh, and then there's another one called the Billion Dollar Creator, which asks the question of like, if you have an audience, you can you can point that attention anywhere you mm. want, right? So what's the highest leverage um, place to point that attention for building wealth? Um, and w in the essay, I unpack a bunch of. Um, a bunch of examples from uh, like Mark Sisson who wrote Mark's Daily Apple yeah. and then did Primal Kitchen and yeah. you know, all the stuff to uh, who else? We, I think we have uh, Dr. Dre in there and a whole bunch of other examples. Nice. Um, but that came together over a long period of time. I didn't sit down and write that essay, either of them. Like I got stuck on parts of it. I was like, why is it this way? Or things that I knew intuitively, I thought, you know, um, like you see something like uh, Jessica Alba starting the Honest Company, and you're like, "Oh, that's interesting. She's making more money from the Honest Company than she is from her acting career. Mm. Why is that?" So you start to notice things like that. Oh, she's she has equity in this thing that she's doing. Okay, 
you know, or you notice like Mark Sisson sell Primal Kitchen for $200 million. You're like, well, hold on. His blog was wildly successful, but like to the tune of $2 million a year. Hmm. How, like, what's the difference here? And so I would notice things like that and start to write it down and try to like take a stab at maybe it's this. Um, and then run ideas by friends um, and like get them to build on it. And so anyway, I guess the, the, the meta point is a lot of these things that I've written that I'm really, really proud of started in like a very incomplete, nonsensical, like, you know, mm. just stuck with a question and then attacking it from a bunch of different angles. And then through writing, uh, it became clear and I felt like I could, could explain it well. Yeah. And so what I realized I've been doing in my writing is only writing things that I can sit down and be like, oh, it's this. Let me explain <laughs> A to mm. Z how it works. And that's not how effective content creation happens. I think a, a, like the best content creation starts with a question and then it starts with you as the, um, as the one writing it, creating it, the hero of the story, whatever, trying to figure out and unpack that, like going on a journey mm. rather than coming in as the expert being like, yeah. this is what it is. And, it, and the good news is, is it's much easier to create content when you approach it that way. Than, yeah, a lot less pressure. Oh, yeah. Did, um, well, how did Mark do it? He went he, at $2 million value in his blog, and yeah. he's able to produce $2 million in, in, in revenue or whatever with his blog. And then he basically 200 or 100 x it. Yeah. If he was able to then do a... Uh, uh, <clears throat> for those that don't know, like Primal Kitchen, that's like uh, salad dressing out of avocado. Yep. So it's this health angle. Yep, that like paleo friendly. MSG and stuff. Yeah. Keto. I think he's a big keto guy. He's got the book Two Meals a Day kind of guys, intermittent fasting. Uh, well, what's the key? Well, so what in all of these examples, what they do is you take something like what Mark was doing, where he was directing attention to uh, ebooks. Um, you know, other digital products, a lot of affiliate type stuff, right? Someone else would have a business and he would uh, promote that. Yeah. Um, right. That was a good fit for his audience. And um, you see a lot of these uh, bloggers or content creators that get to that path and they have incredible leverage, right? To be able to yeah. work a job and make a million dollars. Pretty a year. much by yourself. May, he he might have had two or three people yep. working for him. Yep. Some contractors, an assistant, yep. that yep. kind of thing. Like it's amazing. The leverage from an audience is huge. But then you're like, okay, what's the difference between that and something that could make a hundred million dollars? And really what it is, is you have to direct it to a product um, that can be sold in mass to a, a broader audience where you own equity in that. Mm. So if you think of um, with Primal Kitchen, right? It's something that you're, if you like their avocado mayonnaise, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to buy that on a regular basis. And so you got some re recurring purchases in that. Um, it has brand equity because you're like, oh, Primal Kitchen, I've been buying these three items from them. They just came out with a salad dressing. Let's mm. try that too. Mm. But the most important thing is that he has equity in it. And so that he actually owns that. Another example, um, uh, the actor Ryan Reynolds. He does, you know, he plays Deadpool. Um, he's in tons of movies. Yep. He gets paid for his time doing that and he and the movie you know he makes residuals as yeah. the movies come out but you see him like doing endorsement deals right he's getting paid uh to you know represent this product his tv commercial who knows maybe he gets paid five million dollars to show up and film a tv commercial like it's amazing for him but what you've watched him do over the last like five years in particular is buy companies become the face of the company and then build the value a huge amount so to oh, example, he'll buy the company that he's endorsing. Yeah, because he goes, uh, no. I want, I don't want to get paid a little bit. I want to. I want if, equity. I want equity. So Aviation Gin is an example. I don't know what he bought it for, um, but he sold. He then was the face of it. He has his own media production company. They made all these amazing commercials for it. Okay. And then he's building up equity, right? The the value of the company goes from here when he yeah. bought it to here. And instead of going, oh, I'll take a percentage of that or, you know, pay me for my time in front of the camera, he's saying like, no, like <laughs> I want the full value. Another yeah. example was Mint which, Mobile, which is a, uh, a cell phone provider. 
that he bought became the face of had his marketing company create all these great ads for it and it's now worth yeah. like 10 times as and much. then and then that company can scale in a different way than he could do just by himself with his direct yeah. audience and so he can be this leverage point and it because you know the rock does this really good too if you follow the rock on instagram i, I don't uh, follow him but you know he started his tequila. own tequila uh you know and you know he'll document him going around and he, he, on his tour, flight tour, to meet with all the CEOs and try to get this this tequila in there, and so uh, I imagine too, he's probably not he he's not the best actor in the world, right? But he's the Somebody highest disagree. paid actor in the world, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. it could be because he has a following to say, "Hey, Jumanji's out now," <laughs> you right. know, he's documenting that and it's coming along and he's own, owning this. But to to bring it down to so so yeah, so I wonder if. You can see it with Ryan, right? People would recognize and know him, and mm -hmm. or, or The Rock, especially. Like if you ask Mr. Google about who's the most famous person in the world, it's The Rock. So, calling up and getting an appointment with a distributor, it's gonna be a little easy. easier, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Any of those things. Another example <laughs> is uh, George Clooney. Um, you know, had a phenomenal acting career for a very long time, um, but his money is made from Casamigos tequila. Which his share of it when okay. they sold it, he made three hundred million dollars. Yeah, that. gosh, that's a lot of money. And so, like, bring this back to content creators, yeah, um, like us. My version of it actually is ConvertKit. Yeah, I was, I was gonna making, say you're you're probably an example in the story, aren't you? Yeah, um, you weren't. I was you? making two hundred fifty thousand a year selling yeah. um, ebooks, which is to amazing. My, Anybody listening to this would be like, "Let's do it." They're gonna <laughs> yeah. start there. They're gonna start there. And 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 the great thing is, and we should dive into that part of it, but. Um, because once you build that leverage on that side, like you yeah. can just, you can keep going. But I was like, wait, I have these people following me. I have this attention already. What product, what business can I get into that would scale and grow without me that would have, um, like it's a better type of product. You know, it's not uh, selling software. It's very sticky. Once you switch over, you're unlikely to leave. Yeah. Um, it's recurring. Uh, the, the industry treats it well as far as multiples and valuations and all of that. So there's a whole bunch of things that go into this, but we basically went, went to, from something that was making a few hundred thousand dollars a year to convert. It's now making $32 million yeah. a year. Yeah. <laughs> and it Good goes, up, thanks. It goes up from there, but, um, there's a lot. I mean, there's so much that we get into. <laughs> there's a lot. Go for it. I'm taking the, notes. We'll come back if we need to. The types of products that you choose. The um, well, how did you um, when you say scale without you? I can understand maybe how Mark Season would scale, maybe in in that he would get in with a distributor, mm -hmm. and a distributor would get him into these grocery store, into Whole Foods, right? And then people are buying at Whole Foods whether they know him or not. Yep. So how did you get beyond your personal brand and your personal reach with ConvertKit? I mean, a lot of partnerships, a lot of getting to know people. Okay. Um, you know, we did a lot of affiliate stuff in the early days. Um, you know, you might have heard of us from like Pat Flynn or Brian Harris. Yeah, um, that's where I heard of you, one of those two. Yeah, and they, you know, they were both early affiliates, like friends, and then affiliates for ConvertKit. Um, Customers. Uh, Pat always was. I don't know if Brian. I, Brian has a bunch of business stuff going on. I don't. I, yeah. So how'd you get? So is that key to to get somebody like Pat who has? I mean, and then it's yeah, word it of huge. mouth. Yeah. Because you maybe had a network from your blogging. Yeah, I had a network. Hmm. Um, one of the things that I love about content creation, is, we were joking about this the other day because I sent you an email. I was like, can I come hang out on your farm? And you're yeah. like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when, you know, but yeah, you have not everybody can do that. Yeah, right. But because I had a parasocial relationship with you, yeah. I knew who you were. And I was like, yeah, come on. Yep. And so um, like having those that content that you create puts you on this Right, someone someone will get an email from you and be like, "Oh, you know, maybe already recognize you, or like look you up and go, oh, this person's got a YouTube channel with ten thousand yeah. subscribers. We yeah. have this in common. You're not like you immediately distinguish That's yourself right. from like the potentially weird, maybe creepy fan. You know? No, yeah, um, we we it makes us more comfortable because people know us, <laughs> but we don't know them. Right. And I wonder. I, I used to wonder why are all our friends 
homesteading YouTubers. I mean, we have friends that are homesteading and not YouTubing. That's yeah. not like a requirement to be our friend. I brought the phone over here and I knew we'd, I knew that would pay us back. Let me see. I didn't mean to bring our phone. <laughs> I guess they'll get it at the house. Okay, it's answering. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, well, you know you have a, you you know you have a lot in common. With I them. could at least look them up. Yeah, you get a lot of common. But, like one example, I used to hate going to conferences. Like I'm, uh, it was a weird thing. I loved and hated it. Hated it. Um, like total introvert. I did, yeah. I, the first conference I went to was a web design conference because that's where I got my start. And you're just going as a participant? Just going as a participant, yep. trying to learn. And I remember this interaction. It was in Seattle. And uh, there was a conference venue on the waterfront. And then a little further down was the hotel also on the waterfront. And we're walking out, like, good day at the conference. But I didn't meet anyone other than, like, one person who was sitting next to me who, like, introduced himself. Because I just I did not like introducing myself to other people. And so then I'm walking back. It was a good day, but like I felt like it would have been cool to meet people, but I couldn't bring up the courage to like yeah. say hi. And I realized that like seven of the conference speakers were walking in front of me down the Seattle waterfront. And mm. I was like, oh, these are people. I read all their blogs. I learned web design from these seven people. And so I was like, oh, maybe I can like just join their conversation. Yeah. And so I like started to walk faster to catch up to them. And then I was like, no, there's no way they want to talk to me. And I like walked slower, <laughs> you know? And mm -hmm. then, and I was like, no, 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 this is the, like, build the courage, you know? And then I started doing it and I'm like, no, they're all friends. They, you know, and so it didn't, and we turned into the same hotel and they like turned into sit in, sit in the lobby and like hang out and chat. And I'm like, maybe. And I just keep going to my room. And I remember thinking that like, there's no reason that they would want to talk to me or, um, mm -hmm. you know, and just move right along. Uh, about two years later, I started my blog and, uh, I wrote and sold my first book, um, like built up, a, not a big audience, uh, but maybe 3000 people on an email list, 4,000 people. And I'd been, been blogging about the whole journey. Um, and I went to a conference that was like, it was called microconf and it was about, it was a bunch of like software, uh, digital entrepreneur um, type people. And I went to that conference and had a completely different experience because people were like, oh, Nathan, I read that post that you put out, mm. you know, about how you did your ebook launch. Um, and I was staying there in this circle of people who like we were just having a great conversation and they were like coming up to me and someone came up and said, oh, I like I got to run to this other thing, but I just want to say hi. Uh, and the line that he said that always stuck with me, he was like, uh, if my friends knew I was at a conference with Nathan Barry and I didn't say hi, like, oh. they would like give me a hard time about it. Um, and I was contrasting those two things of like, I was still the same relatively shy, introverted yeah. person just yeah. two years later. But the difference is I'd put content out on the internet. People had followed me. And now I didn't have to introduce myself to anyone. I mean, I, like nice. in this certain circle. And that's what even like a small audience does. And so it it means that when you reach out to people that you want to connect with, you know, wanting to partner with someone like a Pat Flynn or, um, you know, wanting to do chores uh, at the Rhodes Farm, you know, all yeah. of that, right? People know you from that audience um, and it's so worth it. Yeah. Does, um, I wonder if, to going back to, to scaling, okay, so you scaled to convert kit, you were, you were meeting a need inside of, your target market, mm -hmm. your, your target market was online business guys, content creators. Yep. Your target market was me, anybody. It could be somebody tr tr trying to make a living homesteading or somebody like making a living baking cakes or whatever, right? Yeah, it's all so content you, creators. So this, yeah, content creators. Um, so I wonder, so you scaled to service them. I scaled maybe, and maybe I'm missing something. But I scaled to Abundance Plus, mm -hmm. where um, that's a service to my audience that hopefully is a is well, it is. It's not just an extension of the Justin Road Show; it's something else. Yep. Do you think that's my scale? I, I or think do you think there's something out there that's different? 
I think the, uh, is that my hundred X. I think it's your, probably your twenty five X. Um, so uh, let, let's break it down. So we can talk about you specifically, or like a, say a YouTuber with five hundred thousand subscribers, yeah. right? There's a lot of reach. Um, yeah. If if we break it down into a few categories that we make up on the fly, um, <laughs> one of them, right? You have this audience. Sounds like you prepared for this. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. trust me, he's not. Um, we started before we even told you. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first thing is we've got this audience and we're <clears throat> making money through YouTube AdSense. Yeah. 500,000 subscribers, decent engagement. How much money should I be making on AdSense? Uh, you you can be making uh, like five, five ten thousand dollars a month. Yeah. So we're at that point. Fifty. Let's yeah. call it sixty you, to one hundred twenty thousand. You You could quit your job at this point. Yeah. Um. But and a lot of people stop there, or they're like, "Hey, let me maybe do, uh, like a brand deal." In addition to that, or like one or two a year, where I'm, okay, right? That's one category. If you talk to a YouTuber in that category, and they're like, "I've made it," what, what what would you say about their earning potential that they don't realize? I would say you're you're miss you're <laughs> you. you it, there's an easy way to 10x that. Yeah, you've with climbed digital creating your own digital products. Yeah, so like building an audience. Um, uh, in addition to YouTube, whether it's email or text messaging or Instagram, you know, like, yeah, like, well, because what if I, this is it too? What if what if YouTube pulls the plug and they, right, they threaten to pull it, or, especially with with homesteading? Yeah, well, that that's how I don't know if you know this, but that's how Abundance Plus was born. The yeah. we were on the tour and they st YouTube started coming off uh, pulling things. You can't show guns, you can't show butcherings. Okay, we saw the writing on the wall and we said we need our own platform. Right. And uh, it, it started Abundant Permaculture Membership. And that was always a backup. If YouTube pulled the plug, we could put all our videos on there. We started with instructional videos, right? Stuff yep. that wasn't. We were going to start another YouTube channel that was going to be instructional. Yep. We're like, forget that. We need to have our own private platform. Yeah. So as you do that, right, you go from the content, you know, just on YouTube, we're making money off of, um, off of ads. And then kind of from there, you've got your own uh, content or your own your own platform, maybe an email list. You you can push out say like, hey, I'm launching this ebook. I'm yeah selling this thing, and that is a pretty clear path to doubling revenue. Yeah, right. At least now, what you've done is a tier beyond that, which um, maybe a couple of tiers beyond that, but you've got uh, recurring revenue, which is this like. I mean, it's amazing because I've I would do ebook launches or something, and I'd make twenty five thousand dollars in a day from an ebook launch, but then it tapers off. Um, and it, it you know if you're trying to hire employees or scale beyond that, you're like, okay, how many launches? And what if one launch doesn't do as well, mm -hmm. and I still need to make payroll? Um, yeah. And so recurring yeah. revenue is this thing that that's amazing. And and YouTube income can drop drastic. Yeah. Like there's you get paid per per click, but that can, I mean, right now, uh, we're at like 20 CPM, so $20 per 1,000 views, uh -huh. something like that. But that's not normal. Like, it's normally 10 or 5, whatever. Your audience is really engaged right And it now. can just be all over the place. Yeah, and so I think... Um, so that reoccurring revenue, that was it too with the, with, with the early Abundance Pluses. Yep. And then I think the um, other lever... Uh, um, <laughs> A bit of leverage that you have in that with Abundance Plus is that you've taken it beyond just you. Okay. Right. You've started to bring in other people. And that's really important because then it, it starts to grow. Like, what if someone's like, oh, I love Justin's content, but then, you know, I actually like, you get someone else in that they resonate with more. Yeah. Right. And so it can build on itself. And that could be a thing. Now it can be promoted much more by other people. So you can get marketing channels yeah. that coming in from different sources. We hired an affiliate manager to reach out and, and, and try and gain affiliates. Mm -hmm. That's going okay. I mean. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So, the, and that and was that would get to you too is I don't like that work. Like I, uh, the partnerships, I hate getting on the phone. <laughs> People, if you have a hard time getting me on the phone, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, somebody might line me up to talk to an event 
and I, and I, let's let's get on the phone and chat. And I'm like, let's see if we can handle it by a text. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but partnership, I hear you. I mean, we we partnered with another creator, uh, Roots and Refuge, and we launched a show for them, and it did really well, and it really increased uh, membership. And I enjoyed that because they're you know they're friends and whatnot. But when well, that's something so, where they're putting in. It, the more um, content that's created is going into this one thing that continues to, to build value. Whereas what a lot of content creators do, and to be clear, they should start doing this and then go to what, mm. what you're doing now, is like release one thing, right? Here's a set of plans for how to build, yeah. you know, a chick shot, right? Or whatever, right? You might sell this one thing or you might sell an ebook or a small course on this specific This is where thing. you suggest people start. And then you, because... After they've built that audience. There's so many skills to learn. Yeah. Like we could break it down. That's one thing in the, in the Ladders of Wealth Creation essay we talk about is um, making money as a skill, just like playing the drums or the piano or something else, and you get better at it with practice. Okay. And so really it's the, um, this is an idea I first heard from a guy named Jason Fareed who founded a company called Basecamp. Um, and, and really it's like a, a thousand small skills. Mm-hmm. And so if we think about um, content creation, right? Your, your first videos are not good because you, Mm -hmm. you know, you shot them with your iPhone. You like the audio is not good. You don't know how to be on camera. You don't know how to edit it. Right. So you start to improve all these little things. Um, and then it, it gets to where you can create a great vlog and it's fairly effortless. You're not thinking about, yeah, you know, a lot of details. Same on the content creation side, right? If we're going to sell an ebook, um, you know, you got to know what platform you're going to sell it on. How should you price it? How you now you have to know how to write copy for a sales page. Where do you even host and make a sales page? Right, as you learn all of these things, it's hard. Yeah. But you gradually figure out each one of those, and the next time you do it, it's much easier. Um, and then you can move up through. What a lot of people do is they they launch one product, learn a bunch of skills, make money on that. Yeah. Launch a second product, learn more. The third product is easier. And then they get to this point where they have four, five, six products that are all kind of spread about. And if you put effort into one, it doesn't necessarily help improve the rest. Yeah. And so what you've done with Abundance Plus is you've made one thing yeah. that you can promote and it's recurring so that it's not like someone buys it once and then they yeah, that was the key. have it to was, pay you again. It's getting old, just living off of launches. You, know, you never know how they're going to do. Yep. Um, and so now every time you do a partnership or you work, you know, create content with someone else, it goes into abundance plus and it yep. makes the whole thing better. You know, it might only be 5% better cause it's already so valuable, but it like keeps building that up. And so that's the, um, like that's a huge level up. And I imagine it's a, been a huge yeah. level up in your mm-hmm. income and, um, and like it can keep. Yeah. It was almost like, uh, uh when we sold Joel Salatin's book, micro polyface, we offer the three tiers. I learned three tiers from you. You <laughs> yeah. could get the book only. You could get the book plus a year of Abundance Plus. Or or the third level was uh, the book plus a year of premium Abundance Plus. Mm-hmm. I so, like that you've, you have tiers within I'm, Abundance and, Plus. And that's helped me because then I'm marketing something fresh. It's right. just not like, oh, hey, this is the third launch of Abundance Plus this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, spring registration or New Year's registration or fall registration. No, there's something fresh in there. Yep. Saying I'm not I'm actually marketing the book, which comes free with Abundance Plus at that point. Uh yeah, it's a new wedge that you get to drive in. It's a new sales angle, it's a new it's new content to create surrounding the pitch and all this stuff. Yep. Uh but I don't want to I eventually I don't want to I'm still caught up in it because you know you 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 memberships come and go. People mm-hmm. leave. You have you call it the churn rate, yep. and uh, so we still have to do uh, spring, summer, New Year's regist- registration, and um, I had to figure out a way to get it to a point where it can grow without my marketing effort, my personal brand marketing efforts. Is that like if if you were to think about what's next for Abundance Plus? Is that the most important thing? Like, is it more important that it grows or mm. that it grows without your effort? Because <clears throat> it's two different strategies. Wow, yeah. Wow, that's a good question. Yeah, because uh, it's important that it uh, grow. It's important that at least 
stay where it's at because this is a big part of our business, big part of our income. Uh, but, and then it's important uh, to run without me because I'm getting older and want and, and don't want to do this forever. Yeah. And want it to stand on its own. I never started as an extension of the Justin Roadshow. I want it to be able to stand on its own two feet. It's a kid. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it grows faster than my flesh and blood kids. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want 18 years to it. No, this thing does not need to be 18 years. So I'm trying to get this thing to grow up. Hopefully it's on like dog years or yeah, exactly. chicken years, even better, two and a half. <laughs> uh, I mean, at that point, you need a team, right? That yeah. comes down to your, yeah. your, it is its own. There's two ways to look at it. Yeah. One is... Uh, the YouTube channel, the Justin Rhodes show, right? Yeah. Is, Which I love to do, by the way. Yeah. And that is the primary yep. top of funnel. And then Abundance Plus is the, the, you know, the sales pitch, the bottom of the funnel. Yeah. And really what you're trying to switch it to is like a hub and spoke model where Abundance Plus is the hub and everything that you're doing is one of 15 spokes. Yeah. Um, in that. And so that's going to require. Um, hiring, you know, a, probably a CEO for okay. Abundance Boss. That's gonna hire. It's gonna take hiring somebody who doesn't mind getting on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just you, send me out. I'll do the video, right? I'll do the. Yeah, like there's all of these things that. How do you, you don't like to do? You you were okay. So here it is. I like to make. The, I like the thousand words a day. Mm -hmm. When I found you, it was uh, you. You had this thousand word a day challenge. And I did it with writing, and that helped us. We were blogging, and we po published a video every week, had a nice magnet, a lead magnet to get, build our email list, a nice little bonus if people signed up for the email. And that built us our list going into our launch of our product, Permaculture Chickens. Well, then it transferred to um, vlogging. Yep. Okay, we f Rebecca found a family vlogger. Video went viral. He found out she was pregnant and got to reveal to her that she's pregnant. You know, he snuck a little pee thing in the in the toilet. And then she was like, what is this? And she went and followed, and they, like, had a video every day. And we're like, let's do it. Because um, you can film and you can edit a video a lot easier with a kid on your lap mm -hmm. than write. You know this because yeah. you've put a tiny house in your backyard so that you can escape. <laughs> is, yeah, 200 but, feet separate. I don't know if you noticed in my house, where's the office? It's right there right next the to the kitchen table. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> On purpose. I mean, because uh, I, do uh, you know, because it's okay. And, and now that I've hired an editor, mm -hmm. I'm like, I mean, it was hard for me to give that up. And then now I'm like, no way would I ever do that again. I just want to make the content. How did you go from making the content? Because you were writing a thousand words a day happy, and you're you're now going back to it. And I was like, this is refreshing. To getting on the phone and 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 hiring C well you're still the CEO, CEO aren't you? But I've hired. So you had right? to step in the CEO. Yeah, yeah, it's a deliberate thing, right? Because other that, people end up. That's different than creating content. You're curating now. You're you're an orchestra leader. Do you like that, or would I you do. rather be in the orchestra? Uh, I I like the like yeah conducting the orchestra. Okay. I think um, when you have a good team. You end up spending a lot of time recruiting, you know, okay. and trying to convince. That's what I'm spending my time on right now is trying to convince someone to come lead, like the growth part of the company. You know, I've got okay. VPs of operations and uh, mm -hmm. engineering and product, and you know, now I need marketing and sales. Um, okay. And so, but you end up doing it in your way, right? Like I, I don't love. There's a thing in the startup industry of like, if you're trying to close a candidate, you immediately jump on the like jump on a plane and go meet them in person and. Mm. you know, and all of that. And I'll do some of that if it works for my schedule with my family and all of that, right? That's my version. I don't mind getting on the phone at all, but I'm not going to spend all my time traveling around to... You, you get know. somebody to do that for you? Yeah, like for, for events or something, right? There's, you know, we're at a lot of blogging conferences and that kind yeah. of thing. So you have somebody that can make pretty high level decisions? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the important thing is Basically, is you're trying to reach that next level of scale. Mm -hmm. You're trying to make yourself like uh, redundant, repeatedly. 
What's the thing that only happens with me? Right. So you did it with a video editor in a way. There's all these things. Yeah. You know, you had to yeah. do 10 things and you're like, okay, now these four don't even need me at all. Yeah. It's different when you're the face of it. Cause there's some things that you can't ever let go of. And luckily no. you like that, which is yeah. good. Some people hate that side of it. And they're like, I no, wish and, I and a lot of people in homesteading get into YouTube and they hate it. Yeah. And it, they've quit their job and they, they can do YouTube, but then it's just another job. Right. Yeah, that's, that's not so good. <laughs> that, that's part of why we've been successful is I actually like that craft. I actually yeah. like the... I, don't, I, I even hesitate to call it filmmaking at this point. It's more documenting. Mm -hmm. I tried getting into like uh, the film, you know, being very thoughtful and, and process about it you know the Casey Neistat the, or the Peter McKinnon you know I even yeah. did the slow-mo montages and stuff but in homesteading people I'm learning they don't care right they just they want actually want to see more action and this is what I'm learning right now and it's hard for me to give it up because I actually did like the filmmaking I like thinking about the shot the framing the transitions the uh, the storyline the plot uh, Kevin Costner freed me from that I heard him on the Tim Ferriss podcast Dances with Wolves. Yeah. What does the character want in the beginning of that show? Oh, it's movie? been so long. He wants, you don't know. Yeah. You have no, you don't know what John, uh, what is his name? John Dunbar wants. Uh-huh. And you don't know where he's going. You do, and, and there's obstacles or setbacks, but you don't know what this guy wants. And it's, this, it's a plot journey. Mm. So basically my vlog is, what did you do today? And I try to capture the most exciting things. Yeah. So people have to, to make this relevant for the audience. Don't they have to, I, I'll tell them, write if you like to write, right? Like do blogs. And there's still a way to make money blogging. Oh, yeah. We're, we're doing it. We, we, we relaunched the blog. We had given it up for six years, but we, we got a team mm -hmm. and now we're blogging. Yeah, there's an uh, idea. I mean, it's really, really important, like you're saying, to make money in the way that you, or build an audience yeah. in the way that you like it, right? So someone might start out and being like, oh, Justin did it this way, Pat Flynn did it that way, let me copy that. And in the absence of your own ideas, that's totally fine. Because you'll try it out and then go, oh, I, I, I don't like writing. I do love YouTube or vice versa, yeah. right? Um. And if you go in with this assumption of like, oh, I don't think I'll like that. I'm not going to try it. Like, that's not good. And so instead that's go true. in. How long should they try it? They're listening to this. They're, yeah. they're not sure. And there's many choices. Voice, they could do podcasting. Mm -hmm. They can do short form video now. That's a whole nother right. option for you. One takes. I mean, I have one take videos on TikTok with millions of views. That's a good question on how long uh, to try it. Writing. Uh, like, do you believe in this 30 day number, 60, 90? Uh, I think there's two different, like, depends on what we're optimizing for. Seven. I think if we're trying to decide, <laughs> do we, like, do I like this? Can I, do I want to build a habit around it? Probably 30 days is good. Yeah. But then if you find the thing that you like, so you're like, oh, I, I love video, but I'm discouraged because after 30 days, you know, I have 12 subscribers to YouTube or 50. Yeah. Uh, my my philosophy on this is if you find the thing that you love and you're not getting traction on it, uh, my friend Sean McCabe says this, of you show up every day for two years. Dang, yes. Because that you can't do help. It. Like, okay, imagine someone, you've probably met lots of people who are like, oh man, I, I love what you're doing. I also love YouTube. I started my own show. I worked on it for like a month. You know, or like I worked on it for two years and it didn't work I out. I see a lot of people doing that. And you're like- It's a lot of effort. Yeah, or the, they're like, they worked on this for a certain amount of time. You know, like I did it every day for a month and I didn't get traction, so I quit. Or I worked on it for two years and it didn't get traction, so I quit. And you're like, well, tell me about those two years. And they're like, well, yeah. the first couple of weeks it was every every day. And then like there was some time every weekend. And then it kind of got to the point where it was like, you know, maybe I'd do a video every mm -hmm. month. And you're like, well, I can tell you why it didn't work, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But if you know someone, you meet these people who are just relentless. I come across people who I'm like, if I could buy stock in you personally. Yeah. Because they have, uh, like I would, because you have this drive to just show up consistently every day. And if you do it for two years and you're like iterating and learning in that process, 
I, uh, I believe that in content creation, you cannot lose if you do that. The only way that you lose... Yeah, okay, that's encouraging. I think the way that you lose is by tying your output to your motivation. So I feel motivated today, so I'm going to make a video. I yeah, feel motivated don't do that. to write a thousand words. And no. what, what do you do the day you don't feel motivated? No, uh, I'm relentless. Yeah. How do people get relentless? Well, Ooh. they quit their job. <laughs> no, that, I mean, people do it because, because, because and, and you, 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 because we got in a hard place. I mean, mm -hmm. we got sick, and you'll get relentless if you're jumping in dumpsters to provide for your family. If you're renting out your spare bedroom on Airbnb to get by. If you're hauling the landlord's other house's trash once a week to the dump. Uh, living on food assistance, maxing out credit cards. Right. And you and you re and, and a mentor hands you the four hour work week and you see some sort of model here for a product, a reading and video companion product, and and then you start listening to Smart Passive Income podcast or whatever. Right. While you're doing dishes, while you're driving. Dude, I, we had this janky minivan. We had to burn podcasts onto CDs. And listen to the podcast on the CD yeah. in this janky van. <laughs> so, okay, you were talking about that's how to get relentless. Uh, but I think what you just described is someone who's already relentless. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this. I'll with, give you that. With Because uh, I guess I was even relentless in the sense that I would jump in a dumpster to feed my family. On, right. As opposed to going and getting a job. Because I didn't want to be away from my family. Mm-hmm. I'd rather jump in dumpsters. And... <laughs> I guess that's pretty relentless. <laughs> that is. So, I mean, how do you, I think it's an interesting question of how do you build uh, like that, that, uh, how do you get care that drive? Well, I think part of it is you, that thousand word a day. Yeah. And, but I don't know, Nathan, because I, every time I think about the thousand word a day, I had to, I started getting traction with it and build an email list and I'm getting the income from it. And I'm like, this is like a career times 10. And, and, and I'm, I'm, it's dream. It's a dream. Like really I could vlog in the morning, doing chores, doing our passion, take a break I eat all with my family, then eat lunch, and then edit in the afternoon with a child in my lap, get up, do this or that. That's it. Yep. Make as much as a doctor. <laughs> Which is wild. I had this realization at one point where I was like, wait, this is maybe five, six years ago. All my highest income friends yeah. are content creators. Most of them are college dropouts. Most of them, <laughs> you know, like all the, you're like, wait. I know. They're all making as much as doctors, yeah. lawyers, all of that. And they're- Wasn't that trippy when you're like, <laughs> you're at the doctor's office and you're like, wait, make more than them, probably. <laughs> probably, <laughs> you know, maybe if there's some specialist. Right yeah, there. no, no, maybe not the surgeon, maybe not the- uh... <laughs> Right, but the general, general <laughs> practitioner, for sure. They're just, so, shot, just starting out, yeah. I, I think there's two things in what you're saying. One is- uh, we can talk more about being relentless, right? That's so important. If someone is saying, I want to be a content creator because that's going to enable me to work four hours a week, 10 hours a week, whatever. Yeah. They're like, here's where I am today, not really working on <clears throat> something hard. And I want to be at the state later where I don't have to work on something hard. Uh, that person's going to fail. Because there's a mountain to climb yeah. in between, okay. and uh, and they don't know what they're signing up for. Yeah, so that's one thing. The other thing is finding the version of climbing that mountain that you love, because there's a hundred paths okay. over it. Okay, right? And you tried the the writing path, and yeah. you applied that relentlessness to it. Yeah, and, and it you, was actually doing all right. Yep, and it and it, it and it worked because you were so it's relentless. And then in that, you're like halfway up the mountain and you're like, oh, what's this video path, you know? Yeah. And then you apply the same relentlessness to it. And that was your ideal path for you over the mountain. Yeah. Right? And so I think, and there's tons of different paths. Now, That's what's amazing. I'll give it. you another path that failed. It was uh, all the business guys, Chris Ducker and then Pat Flynn, I guess they're buds. Uh, Periscope was it. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Remember, oh, remember yeah. Periscope was the first time you could do a live right. on your phone. Did 150 of those straight. Wow. No matter what. I put the thousand word a day principle. Yep. And uh, 
12, 24 people mm -hmm. on at a time. That wasn't going to go anywhere. Pitching anything on that, you know, building, building a product and pitching that. But I wasn't, I didn't stop blogging. I like to fail a lot, but fail small. Right. So I think maybe as we're trying these um, channels, yeah, you're staying consistent on your core thing. Yeah. You're trying yeah. Periscope. You know, maybe you didn't need to try it for 150 days. Maybe 30 would have been enough. Maybe we know that. Yeah, five that's my have relentless been. at work there. I just wasn't going to give it up or maybe until I found something else. And now. Right. Um, you're, like, you're, you're saying, and, hey, I'm willing to swap something else. Yeah. And I don't know why. I guess I'm always open to mm -hmm. there's going to be something else. Even now with the rise of TikTok and Reels. Yep. Uh, I'm, having, I'm, having to, I'm having the sense that I need to do something with vertical video. Yeah. Haven't really found the footing there yet. Haven't put the relentness into it yet. And it could be that you're like, look, I'm always going to have one main focus, one, one, yeah, you know, and then one, one focus, one side, and one experiment. Yeah. So it's like, hey, I'm going to. Okay. My main is the YouTube channel. Yeah. My side is the the email list, the like some level of written because you have an ability. If I want to promote something, I'm going to put it in my video. But I also want the ability to email you as well and, and like hit yeah. on, yeah. on two channels. Yeah, yeah. When we launch, the email is basically the outline or the script for what ends up being the video. Yep. Yeah, and and that works really, really well. And then have this third thing where you're like, I'm not gonna play around with Periscope and TikTok and Twitter, like eight things at once. I'm gonna have one yeah, that's a good one idea. slot that I'm playing around with. Um and so you're like, look, I'm gonna uh, I'm going to try TikTok and Instagram yeah. reels. Cause it's effectively the same content. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to play around with that for 30 days and taking it all the way back. I would write down what, what do I think success looks like? Yeah. If I'm 30 days of yeah. on a TikTok and you know, you have a bunch of videos that have 5,000 views and one that has a million. You're yeah. Like, mm, was that success? Maybe, maybe not. I might've just, you would have that. needed it. Yeah. Yeah, my friend Morgan Gold asked me because I was thinking about going from five shows a week to one and mm -hmm. it being better, you know, hiring a, a video guy and it being more like a show. And he's like, Well, what are your, what, how would you know it's a success or not? And I'm like, Touche, <laughs> good question. And, and on the surface, well, we'd need to get at least as many views. Right. So if the, five shows, 50,000 views, each minimum that's 250,000 views is this one show going to get 250,000 views right yeah i like uh, the approach that you've taken of the consistent vlog uh and then going and producing you know like a tv show quality yeah thing in you know you're not doing it all the time you're not living your life in that like high production TV show. Yeah, and the TV show is then behind the paywall, un behind Abundance Plus. And it becomes another wedge and, that you can launch, you know, Abundance Plus and with. When we pitched it, it pitched well cuz like you're you're getting my vlog, I mean you can watch us for free, but if you actually want to go see this third person perspective, if maybe there were stories that we could dig in deeper right. in like an interview setting, you can see me interacting with the kids different when somebody else is filming. Mm -hmm. And it's more um, it's been good that for for people listening, like the the vlog's been good too because people connect with us as friends. Yeah, and it's a massive word of mouth thing, and then it wins. It's something we've created for them, seeing the need in them. It does well. Yeah, and 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 so like a lot of the stuff in Abundance Plus is instructional. You, you go into our vlog and it's fun and you laugh and you learn a little something. You immersion learning, like yesterday we castrated pigs. But we did also did so many other things. Right. But if you want to learn how to castrate pigs, you go to Abundance Plus and mm -hmm. say, how to castrate pigs, and we have a video on it. Right. Yeah. So one thing you said here about the, I had a core, right? Like, so I had YouTube as a core, mm -hmm. but people listening are going to have their job as a core. Yeah. And then they need to have this, ex this relentless experiment. Yeah, and then, as a then side as hustle, that's probably the better way yeah. than just quitting your job and, and going for it. But Oh, because if you just quit, <laughs> <laughs> yes, 100%. Uh, I don't know. Uh, someone described it as like 
swinging through the jungle, you know, Tarzan swinging through the jungle on vines. Yeah. Like not letting go of the vine that's holding your weight until you get your hand on the next one. Mm. You know, the quitting the job. Yeah. To go pursue something well, is like that. Like, dude, that I think people need to rethink. And can the job be the content? If they like it, yeah. and because I've seen I've seen POV videos of dudes packing McDonald's with millions of views. There's these these, these there's a lot of these lawn mowing videos. Have you seen those? I have not. They just they set up the camera in a different place. They put it on fast mow. They have the real audio. It's just really simple. Forty five minutes long. This jacked up lawn, and mowing it and getting it looking nice. You're laughing, but it's like it millions of views. Edit it down, but not much. Okay, you're they saying... change the angle a lot on the camera, and and instead of just watching it in real time, they might speed the yep. the time up. Uh, but then, but the model is different. They might have started. They might have been landscaper. If you're a landscaper and you like it, you start creating content around that. It doesn't yep. add that much more time. Well, because the other thing is. If we go back to these skills, right? Being a content creator, let's say I'm a landscaper. Yeah. And I want to be uh, a food YouTuber. I want to, like, my mm. side thing is, a, you know, I want to be um, uh, doing a, a cooking vlog and all of that. Yeah. Right? On one hand, you could be like, there's nothing. They're worlds apart. Okay. Yeah. You're going to have to do a side hustle. Well, no. no. So in that, what I, building on what you were saying is if you think about like all the camera, like you probably spent a lot of time spread out over a long period of time, yeah. learning how to operate a camera and how to yeah. edit and all of that, right? I could say, I'm going to make landscaping videos because I can do that in my day job. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to learn all these content creation That's skills. That's true. And those will translate really, really well. Yeah. Right? How to make a video, how to edit, how to shoot, you know, getting comfortable with all of that. You could also, you might hate landscaping, but you might not hate it if you get some traction making films about it, and, the, and it's the same with car detailing. It's the same, there's the same concept. And then you get to the point where these guys are, and they're, not, they're driving around looking for crappy yards, knocking on the door and say, I'll mow it for free. Because they're making thousands of dollars to make the video, if not 10, well, if it's a million view, they're making, they're making like $60,000 right. to mow this person's lawn pretty good and and this this one guy got to the point where they're like guess no i don't want it for free i have this guy he's like but it was clearly overgrown yeah. he paid him a hundred dollars then you do you mind landscaping so much anymore <laughs> if you only have to mow one lawn a right. month <laughs> <laughs> i think it's fascinating the things that content enables that you couldn't otherwise do yeah like uh there's a show called my first million and sam parr and sean yeah. purry who are on it, they talk about a bunch of random ideas, but they were talking about this idea of um, uh, Michael Jordan's house is up for sale, um, you know, in like Chicago. And it, I don't know what it's selling for, like $5 million, $10 million, right? It's this ridiculously large, I don't know, 25,000 square foot house, all of that. And they were like, hey, someone should buy this because it wasn't that expensive for what it, yeah. for what it was. And they were going back and forth and, um, as I was listening to them, I was thinking about like, this is what content enables. You could buy the house, make content about it. Yeah. So much so that it pays for the house. And then you turn it into like yes. a whole Michael Jordan museum yeah. where people are paying for that. Or another example. Uh, Did they buy it? No, they didn't. The I first million should've. guys? <laughs> I think they should have though. But an example. So I'm involved in this ghost town called Zero Gordo. Okay. Which uh, if anyone watches. I've the, seen those videos. Yeah, Ghost Town Living um, on on YouTube. So I came in just as a small investor, and then uh, ended up buying out more. What people. were you investing in? The property? Yeah. So or yeah, the channel, we, the YouTube channel. Uh, the property, the YouTube channel actually came a couple years later. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So we bought the property in 2018, and the YouTube channel came in 2020. Um, and so today, the YouTube channel is a million and a half subscribers. Um, you know, a okay. new video. Like it's pretty normal for it to hit like top top twenty five trending on YouTube when a video comes out. Um, so it's driving great AdSense revenue, yeah. sponsors in the video. Like there's all this stuff. But what I thought was super interesting is a ghost town on the top of a mountain near Death Valley is a wildly expensive 
venture to restore. Mm. And so there's no way you could do it without content. But content is paying for this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I believe it. So an example is the elevation of the town is 8,000 feet. And if you stand on the on the peak behind the town, if you look one way, you see Death Valley. And if you look the other way, you see uh, Mount Whitney. So you can see the highest and lowest points in the continental U.S. Wow. Standing on this property. So it's incredibly remote and hard to get to. And so we're rebuilding the, the hotel there because um, it burned down in a fire. And so they have to pour concrete. And no concrete company will deliver concrete like up this dirt road. You have wow. to drive. It's a mile vertical, seven miles up this dirt road. And then you get these YouTubers uh, called uh, uh, the Diesel Brothers. They have a YouTube channel. They're out of Utah. And they say, like they hear about the problem. They, they like logistics stuff. They're like truckers. And one of them is a helicopter pilot. And, and they like this. And they say, hey, we'll come do it. We're just going to make content about it. Yeah. And so they, I mean, it's wild what they do. They bought an old cement mixer and they fixed it up, right? It had a cracked frame, but they've got a whole machine shop. So they fixed that up. They brought in a whole crew. They trucked it all in from Utah. And then they, they poured all this concrete. You know, you have all these problems of getting water up the mountain, all this. They solved all the logistics problems and their running joke is like, Hey, this is really expensive. So we're going to make four videos about this instead of the two we originally planned mm. because that made them, yeah. I mean, they spent yeah. $200,000 or more doing yeah. this. Yeah, and I want to say four videos makes more than one longer one. Yeah, and so what they did, I mean, and they've been back several times and making content about it. I think their channel was like 400,000 subscribers when they first came out to help the town. Now they're about a million. That's the, okay, so that's taking a problem and turn it into a solution. That's what yeah. permaculture teaches you to do. Yeah. And I'm telling the the listeners here is you got homesteading, you got lots of problems, and a lot of time people think, oh, I gotta just, I gotta be just right, and I gotta show all the good stuff and it going right. But you know, just a reminder to me that you know this morning we're in a hurry, we want to get all the chores done before you come, and I move the the milk sled and run into a tree. And we're leaving tomorrow yeah. too, so we got all all yep. packing today. And it and not and I rip the chain rips the 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 metal plate off. The the carabiners are broken, and now I have an afternoon job. And that's a pain as right. trying to get chores done. But now I'm sitting here thinking, oh wait, I have an afternoon job because <laughs> the content, the homesteading content today was going to be kind of lame. Right, <laughs> it was just going to be chores and it was going smooth until then and i wanted things to go smooth i really did in my heart <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the, but, but the, now the plot prob- thickened in the vlog and it's going right. to be a more interesting show right turn a problem into a solution and and now people are going to see me figure out how to get in, and i don't have time to like fix fix it so i have to just fix it enough so that it's still going to be working smooth for the farm center tomorrow right and, and people can relate to that yeah, I mean, it's so relatable. Because it, when you have plenty of time, everything goes smoothly. When I'm like, hey, I have all day to do this project on, on my homestead, mm-hmm. it goes smoothly. But when, when I'm like, hey, I got an hour yeah. before yeah. the kids need to be at swim lessons and I'm trying to get this thing done, yeah. that's when it all falls apart. You yeah. know? And so but everyone relates to that. That's what's interesting, right? isn't it? Like yeah. these guys with the concrete... Good for them and these people mowing. There's too many opportunities there. We live in such a, an amazing time, and 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 I've traveled, and I'm sure you have too. I've been in Honduras and seen the dirt floors mm-hmm. and no fridges and no ovens. Yep. They don't have the privilege to sit here and say, "What? Well, what do I want to do? Right. What kind of content do I like to create? This is very." So this is a bit of a wake-up call for people listening to, is just a door of opportunity has opened before us. We'd be slapping everybody in the face who didn't have that if we didn't walk through that. Mm-hmm. And we didn't push through and write, even if we got COVID, yeah. even if the son got in the hospital, even if I only got four sleep, four hours of sleep last night, even if it's Christmas, write. Because there are people with dirt floors who who would die for that privilege. Yeah. I agree. But that's that relentlessness. Yeah. 
going back to that, how do you think we were, we were kind of talking the other day about is someone born an entrepreneur? Yeah. Or if they, you know, can that be a learned skill? I think there there's, Hey, I'm just, this is on the fly, but I'm just thinking about, I think an entrepreneur is someone who has that relentlessness mm -hmm. and finds a way to direct it to something that has leverage. Mm. Cause you were completely relentless when it yeah. came to caring for your family. Yeah. But, but doing the chores for your landlord as other property, all of that has no leverage, right? That is very much time no, yeah. for money. Whereas like if you create a video, same amount of work to make the video if it's viewed by five people or five million people. Yeah. Right. 100%. There's incredible leverage there. Same thing when you launch a product, you make the product. Uh, if it's digital, you know, five people, 5,000 people, you know, who, who buy or read an ebook, it's the same thing. There's incredible leverage. And so I think there's these two things to make a good entrepreneur. And one is you have to be relentless. And the second is you have to understand and, and know how to see and apply leverage. So on the first one, like, if someone is not relentless now, do you think that's a learned skill or do you think like, or do you think you have to learn it as, as a kid, right? Working hard ah, with your dad, you know, yeah. can someone learn to be relentless? I'm not a clean guy, organized guy. Uh, but I'm getting there. Uh, our garage has never been clean, but now all of a sudden, you know, had this electrician come by, he had this amazing trailer that he kept super organized and I'm on this path of trying to be more organized. Mm -hmm. And I quizzed him and got him on the vlog and like just a few of the things he said helped me. And so even if I don't have time after we've quit chores, I'll make time later in the day to go pick up the garage. Yeah. Uh, now, so I want to say, People can change. What you're really saying is, can people change? Maybe. Yeah. And I want to say they can, but is there something in me that is now going to enable me to be relentless about cleaning that garage, or am I learning that because I'm forcing myself? Yeah. Right. If, if, and with my have... health, I, I I was able to do carnivore for sixty days. Mm -hmm. Meat. Meat, eggs, salt, and butter, and that was it. Because you're able to. So, so, so yeah, is that, that thing? just saying I'm gonna do it because I've gotten so sick and I just want it so bad? Because I know we're trying to pull something out it out out for the audience here, but um, what well, is? Think... Can it be learned like in your thousand day challenge or thousand words a day challenge? Could somebody then, after 30 days, really then become relentless when they wouldn't have been? I think that people can, but it might take very different life circumstances. It takes a strong desire. Yeah. Um, and, or it uh, might be a change of life circumstances. Someone might say, hey, I operate in this way. You know, this is my life. I, I grew up this way, whatever else. And then they might have something that shakes them out of it. Either yeah. something that they care about so much that they're pursuing yeah. that, um, because it resonates with them in a way that nothing else has, or you know they get sick in some way, or, or right, or whatever else that it, it shakes yeah. them out of it, and they they need to pursue something. One thing that's helped me be relentless is most people around us people are not relentless, mm -hmm. uh, and that helps you. <laughs> No, that does not help <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> me because you are the five people you're surrounded by. I believe that. I think I do believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'll read. I was a Nirvana kid. Okay. I was 14 when they were hit, getting hot. And so then I've read just recently Kurt Cobain book. I like any of these books of successful people. It doesn't matter. Jay-Z is a guy who, who could really leverage mm -hmm. empire. I don't know if you have the internet, Matt, over there, but you could look up. Empire State of Mind. I looked at it. I found it. Okay. Uh, he would not do endorsement deals unless he was getting equity. But Kurt Cobain, that book shouldn't have been, I don't know. You could look up the name of that book, uh, Matt. Um, the book, it should have been called Relentless. That's what everybody had to say about him. Dave mm -hmm. Grohl and all these guys. Yeah. And he was writing his own music. 
and than what? Heavier than heaven? No, that's not it. Or journals by Kurt Cobain? Nope. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> okay. Apparently, there's a few books. <laughs> um, apparently, Kurt Cobain has a couple books. Uh, that's one way is people need to get inside the heads of other people because yes. their circle isn't going to be a content internet homesteader creators with big dreams right and and I remember dad telling me you'll never sell five copies of permaculture chickens he was right I wouldn't never sell five copies in my county yeah but I've sold like a million and a half dollars worth of permaculture chickens <laughs> uh with the internet. Yep. Oh, yeah. Because uh, you're going to be super niched. Yeah, and you can reach I mean, you can reach people all over the world. Yeah. That's amazing. What have you found of people people following you who... who oh, I, I want to go back to this. When I was for Find You, we were getting traction. I, I'm proving. I can show the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling... The, the, there used to be this guy. He would bring his youth out here. So he's like a youth leader, and he'd bring a youth, and they'd come work on the farm once a week. And I remember... One day, I was, I was telling him about what I was learning with the business while we're shoveling compost, a thousand words a day. And I challenged them. And, and they got on board for a little while, mm -hmm. but then fizzled out. And here I'm, I'm still going. I'm still going. Yep. That was five years ago. And how many blogs? I don't know. A lot. <laughs> so, how do you. Yeah. I think there's definitely people who, <clears throat> until something substantial changes in their life, mm -hmm. either they want to pursue it that much or, yeah, or they get a life event that shakes them up a lot. They won't yeah. ever build that relentlessness. And I think that's where, if you're trying to help people, you probably, as an entrepreneur, when you reach a certain level of success, if if you're you know, disposed this way, you want to help everybody. Yeah. And you can waste a huge amount of energy doing that. You know, if you were like anyone who wants to, you know, you're like, Oh, come out to the farm. I'll show you how I do this. And then I'll show you, how, you know, like you'd waste tons of time and effort, um, in that. And so I think you have to probably give people these small challenges. Like Seth Godin, for example, um, you see him on a bunch of podcasts. Mm -hmm. So people always say like, Seth, will you come on my podcast? And his answer, which I absolutely love is he says, Yes. I will happily be your episode 100. Hmm. And people are like, oh, but I'm on episode three right now. And he goes, exactly. Yeah. You show me that you can get to 100 cool. episodes. You show up consistently for that long. Yeah. That's and then call. I will happily be episode 100. That's a good call. And if you go look, he's like, there's a bunch of podcasts that he's been on. That's that cool. He is literally episode number 100 <laughs> on the show because he's cool. made that rule. And so he's basically saying, you know, if someone's like, hey, Justin, how do I create a YouTube channel? How do I do this? You know, hmm. not that you want to spend your time coaching everybody on that, but if you did, if you said something like, Hey, go create 25 videos, you know, and try to get better every time. And once you've done that, yeah, then I'll get on a call with you and help. Yeah. Right. I used to do that with people. I encouraged a YouTube. I said, you do 30 videos. I'll shout you out. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Right, because then you're you're not saying, "Hey, I'm gonna help someone who's like, yeah. oh, let me pick your brain on this.' Let me." That's right, and I didn't shout somebody out after five videos, and then they fizzle out, which I did right. that once, and I'm like, "I'm doing that again." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think you basically set that bar and say, "This is the base level of relentlessness," and then I'm gonna give yeah. you a little bit of help and a boost. Okay, and and you keep going. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna challenge people to relent, be relentless, whether you feel like it or not. Mm -hmm. So. It might be that you need to write down what is it what what does relentlessness look like? Right. And if they're looking at me for a model, then it's it's uh, creating a piece of content five days a week mm -hmm. and uh, a video. And yep. and if they look at you for a model in your early, uh, uh, it would be right for writing or now. Uh, you're relentless in obviously continuing to grow convert kit and to high sounds like you're relentless in getting the people you need to scale. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so people out there, Shay, Shay, uh, from the Shay Tards channel, what's his last name? Shay. I don't know. He says, uh, emotion follows motion. Hmm. 
So if these people need to write down what does relentless look like and do it whether they want to or not. Yeah. And because you could be relentless in a lot of things that are not useful. Yeah. I've sat there. We've had, we've, we've premiered the Great America Farm Tour and we had these people tra- traveling in for it, other influencer friend, homestead friends, you know, like pre-party oh, yeah. before the before the big show or after, and I'm over there editing. Was that easy? No. <laughs> so you were editing it right up to the... No, no, not the movie. Oh, you were editing... Not the okay. movie. Okay. The vlog. Okay. The movie was edited. Yeah. The point was, that was relentlessness, mm-hmm. even though I didn't want to. Right. And I've, I've, I've filmed with reactive arthritis and had to do the knuckle shot, you know, use a knuckle to turn it on. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so com- I think it's committing to a certain amount of time, to a certain yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. So, okay, now let's use my relentlessness to uh, grow Abundance Plus. So how then do I need to take my ability to be relentless and get this platform to where it can grow on its own. Yeah. So I think you're very, that that's, a, for we talked about if an entrepreneur in our made up definition on the spot is relentlessness combined with leverage. Mm. Now we're into the leverage piece of it and you've done leverage in a lot of ways, right? There's no way that you build yeah. a business making a million dollars a year on the internet without leverage. Yeah. Um, and so then it's starting to be like, leverage that goes beyond you. And that's where I think the team is really, really mm, important. Okay. Um, having someone who their whole job, okay. you don't wake up every day yeah. and think about like, you're not, uh, I don't think consumed by how do I grow abundance plus you're thinking about. That's what I woke things. up about this morning. That was this morning. Okay. Now it had to go away. I didn't want to think about that. It was, an, it was an anxiety mm. because, you know, in between registrations, you know, the number, Yep. Or, or me launching it, the numbers go down. Um, and I, we launch it, and they'll go back up. So I know how to like maintain it. Right. To answer your question earlier, I don't know the second part yet. How to get it to grow without me? We've tr- we we're, we we just ha- got a team to do blogging for us, which yep. will ultimately lead to more signups for Abundance Plus because it's heavily advertised there. Uh, uh, there's there's a company that takes your YouTube videos and turns them into Facebook videos, mm-hmm. and well, that'd be a whole different income stream that we weren't tapping. But it would also drive abundance. Yeah, uh, I guess it would because I end up talking about it in those shows. Uh, at least we're building an audience on Facebook when we weren't. Yeah. Uh, and then we've tried, you know, Facebook ads. But what you seem to be saying is. Yeah, you don't. At least you don't want to be thinking about it in you the morning. You want it where because uh, it's. It, I, I could think about it, but it's not necessarily I could do anything about it. I had to go film chores, then do right. this podcast. So I guess I like the content creation part. Yeah, and and, and so you want it where? Um, well, I, I guess backing up, you're going to need. I think to scale Abundance Plus, you're going to start to need to learn from a different group of people. Okay. One thing that I really like to do in the early days of my business is I, I played in two different worlds. I played in like the startup um, software world okay. and then also the direct response marketing world. And I yeah. pulled things from both. Okay. So for example, in the startup world, great design was everything, right? It really mattered, you know, the look of it and all that. And I, I my background as a designer, I came from that world. But in the direct response world, it was like long form sales pages, great copywriting, but it might be like yellow highlighter, all this stuff. I'm looking yeah. at it like, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. But I tried to take the best of both worlds. And something that I became known for early on was these like long form sales pages with great copywriting that were beautifully designed. Yeah, okay. And so in your case, what I'm thinking about is in the content creation, membership space, all of that, uh, you're one of the best. If you take a step outside of that and step into the recurring revenue subscription software business, oh, yeah. those there's a level the of best. sophistication Not that is close. well beyond. Because these people are building businesses doing 
five, ten, a hundred million dollars a year. Mm. And so when when they talk about churn and cohort analysis and customer acquisition costs and all this stuff, right? It's things that uh. that most people in the content creation world who have a membership they don't get into that. But you're you're reaching the level of scale that you've got to change who you're learning from. Yeah, I need to st- learn from the streaming platforms. The stri- yep, the streaming platforms. Anyone doing well, even I've turned it more Bonus Plus is more than a streaming platform. Yeah. It's a community, it has its own community feed, has its own marketplace, has its own map. Do I need to Okay, so this is and this applies to people listening. If they don't know how this applies, this applies cuz this is talking about scaling and how to improve or have growth. Mm-hmm. So my question now would be, I read the book Netflix uh Matt, can you look up the name of that Netflix book? It's by Randolph it was the found, it was the yeah, co-founder the of story. Netflix. He's yeah. he's out now. Uh, his the buddy who he co-founded it with is running it now, CEO. But um, like he has a podcast where you can that will get never work. that will never work. So I read that, but there's only so many books on how to build a network, right? Uh, so do I hire him as a coach? I mean, you could. It, I. I I believe in. Or you're saying I hire him as a CEO. (laughs) If you can, yes. Um, I would look to who is doing what you're trying to do at 20 million a year in revenue. Right. Try to come up with each of the examples. Right. And then if you were to write uh, your own case study on what this business did, right. You apply that relentlessness to learning about how they they grew it. Right. So you're you're saying. I'm struggling to think of an example, but a business that's that like content community um, has that recurring aspect because that that's a different set of problems that it brings. Mm. So you're learning how they did it, who they learned from, and you write your own case study on that. Could be only for you. You don't need to share it beyond that. Mm. But you do that on five or ten different businesses, and you'll find a lot of like, oh, this is. I hear him talking on a podcast about this is when he hired this a COO and that was a big unlock for this business or like, you know, gosh, I could go back to the business books I've read. Yeah. That's close as you can get it to your, Oh, okay. You want to close. Yeah. Yep. And, and for those listening, they, if they're wanting to scale farm, they're, they're same thing. They're reading books and, and finding the people that are doing what they want to do. That's what you're telling me. Yeah. And you'll find like for ConvertKit, what we did that was a big unlock for us is, mm. Uh, maybe saying going from 15 million a year to 30 million a year is we got channel managers. So I have one person whose entire job is growing our search rankings and that oh. content. One person okay. whose entire job is affiliates, paid marketing. You hired them person. or somebody else hired them? And now I'm at the point where someone else hires them, right? Because I have a, I, you know, I have a director of marketing and these people report to that director of marketing. So if somebody's searching for email hosting or whatever. Yep. Yeah. How to start an email list. Okay. You know, that kind of thing. He gets your blog on, on top of that. Yeah. The, the convert yeah, kit blog. The convert kit blog. Right. And so that's a, that's a steady source of traffic. That's very, they consistent. do ads. They buy ad the keywords ads. Uh, they do some of that too. Yep. But, but even like our articles rank in the same way that if I was to search. Yeah. Okay. So, how to, so one of my ideas would be to, well, let's get affiliates on board. So I hire. I, I did bring. I hired somebody. Do you? Do you? Uh, are you paying salary by the hour, or are you giving them a cut? Oh, we do salary, and then we do profit sharing. Okay. And so. So both. Yeah. Okay. So what you're saying to me though is, I don't need to be the one uh, managing and hiring the affiliate manager, and then I have this idea of like, well, YouTube's kind of my thing. Could I just? I'll be the sponsor of people's Abundance Plus needs to sponsor YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Needs to go to creators and say, but that that's me getting on the phone, blah, blah, working with my friends. I don't want to re- hurt that relationship, right? So it's not me even hiring somebody to do that. It's 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 finding somebody to then set a, that would be above that saying, no, we need to do keyword marketing, we need to do YouTube ad and and yeah. Yeah, and running that business. So the way that I operate, something that I know about myself is I will focus on something and like make that happen. And then, you know, that'll improve. So I'm going to focus on affiliates. 
Okay. Right? We're going to get that really, really good. And then I'm going to focus like, okay, that's going well. And I'm going to move to the next thing. And then I move to the next thing. And then like affiliate starts to drop. I don't know. It's like, uh, uh, in Lord, Lord of the Rings, the Eye of Sauron, like, you know, you shine on something and that, that's what it yeah. proves. And there's plenty of other people out there who are really good at systems and accountability. And that's not me. And so I hire those people. And those are the people who, yeah, right, and are are keeping things managing. They can take whatever inputs that I gave. Hey, here's our playbook for how we do partnerships. Someone's like, sweet, I got it. And then they build that up consistently. I'm and they might, they might, um, give me a list and say, Hey, I'm trying to reach these 10 people. Who do you know already? And be like, Oh, I know these four. Let me text them and make an intro or something like that. Right. So they might still use me, um, to open a door, but they're the ones running the process. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I noticed that I don't want to speak this to everybody listening is, um, um, in hiring people, well, when you're starting out something, somebody's got a job and they're going to start this side hustle creating content, which they should totally do, surrounding their homesteading in some form or fashion. Um, they, uh, even if it doesn't become monetary, uh, it's going to be a social leverage and they're going to have friends and they're not going to be so lonely because they have people right. following and making com comments. But um, they, um, where was I going with that? Uh, oh, it, you, you 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 have to do everything at first. Oh yeah, you're you're gonna have to just take Caleb Wojcik's do it yourself video guy course on how to edit and uh, pick up a camera, follow somebody you like that vlogs and try to mimic the style yep. and uh, figure out what they're using for equipment and just go for it and um, do everything. But you've got to start hiring before you okay. can. Yeah. It's not like we're sitting around with all this money saying, oh, we can now <laughs> hire somebody. Yeah. No. The, the reason you get that money, like somebody asked me once, how do you afford Christy? Christy was our nanny when we were building the bus to go on the Great American Farm Tour. It's not like Rebecca and I were sitting around with all this extra money. Let's hire a nanny, make our life easier. No, we were like, if we're going to do this farm tour, we're going to have to hire Christy. How do you afford Christy? Christy. Is how you afford Christy, right? Because she frees you up. Yep. If you can pay Christy twenty an hour and you can earn thirty an hour, it's it's worth it all day long, right? Yeah, and so you have to find what's the what's the thing that I can hire out that frees me up to do more high leverage yeah. activities. And you have to take that risk. I'm I'm scared to death with every hire, um, because you don't want to let somebody go. This yeah, and that, oh, yeah, but. And you got to make sure you actually hustle and, and are actually working and, and, and producing. And some people use that effectively, like it can be a good driver for them if you have the right personality of like, oh, I hired this, this person, this team, now it has to, like now I have to make it work at the next level. Yeah. And that can be a good drive. For me, it, it's too much anxiety. Yeah. Um, you know, the idea of having to lay somebody off if something doesn't work. And so I'm, a, I'm very conservative with hiring okay. just because of my personality. Um, but like find what works for you. You know, I say I'm very conservative with hiring and I have 70 employees, you know? And so it like, it grows. So what'd you time. think about this morning? <laughs> Were you a nervous wreck this morning? No, I didn't think about vacation? it Vacation? I haven't. You've set it up nice. Yeah. Good. Um, I know that my assistant will call or text me if something that comes up that needs okay. me, but. Okay. So, okay, let's, let's, we'll, we'll scale it back even some more here. So the, how are we going to, um. And I apply it to me, and people can apply it to themselves uh, when, or, when they get to this level. How do I then now reply, apply my relentless better to my YouTube channel? Because I've just seen recently, I mean, it was unfortunate that it happened as, you know, Jonah getting in an accident. Right. I, it could be a combination because we've recently shifted and started uh, making our vlogs longer getting more content, more of a journey plot line instead of just one story. It's about just whatever interesting happens in the day. And so we were starting to get more watch time. You can put more ads in there. Right. But basically, income went up 60% in seven days. Wow. 
like double income in seven days. So that's what's potential with YouTube. And we're talking about the importance of building an audience. With that income came a bigger audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's more people so seeing Abundance Plus. That's how you grow Abundance Plus. I mean, right. uh, you grow YouTube. Yeah. So one of my favorite uh, questions to ask <clears throat> just in life in general is what would have to be true? And so like what would have to be true for whatever, right? If you're working with an employee and they're like, I don't know how we're going to do this. Instead of giving them the answer that I think, I'll often ask, well, what would have to be true for us to mm. uh, do 10 more affiliate partnerships or, you know, whatever Okay. Else? Right. So in your case, okay. the question we're asking is, well, what would have to be true to get double well, the results yeah, What if from I YouTube? wanted a 100,000 views a video? Right. Yeah. What do would have to, to be one. true for that? And I have no, I don't know YouTube, so I don't, but what, like if I ask you, what would have to be true to get to a hundred thousand views? It would have to be, it, it, it took this, it took something really exciting. I don't mean necessarily in a great way because it was some hospitalization of a kid. Yeah. But you could apply that to something good. I mean, Mr. Beast is the example, the biggest YouTuber there is, and it's all positive. It's none of this mm-hmm. negative things happening. So that's a good question and that that is one thing that would have to happen is something more exciting if we go back to like these lawn mowing like the the, the way people pay for things like getting this concrete right. you know rebecca and i are thinking we're, we're uh we have some potential new neighbors that might be bring, bring in some traffic we're we, we might we might move further back into the woods mm-hmm. well is youtube how we leverage uh, the dream home right because that's going to be really good content Yep. Yeah, I think uh, going on a journey, a, a transformation. Uh, you know, we're talking about the, the lawn good. mowing. That's this a transformation. You know, people uh, like to see it before and after. Um, they want to see mm. a journey. Like, what are you trying to accomplish? What can I? Mm. If you're the if you're the hero, yeah. you know, yes, you're encountering like little bits of adversity, you know, here and there. But like, what are you trying to accomplish that I can follow you in? building a house, you know, retreating across the creek and building a house uh, in the woods. Like that is a, a journey that I can follow you on. There's going to be a lot of people relate to that. Mm-hmm. You know, for, uh, for Cerro Gordo, the ghost town, the journey that everyone's following is rebuilding the American hotel, you know, and this is like a multi-year, yeah. it keeps like the, there was just this huge Is the rainstorm. hotel open yet? No, it, it's just a found. They haven't. They're going to have a waiting list. Oh, it's years <laughs> long. <laughs> it's going to be they ridiculous. They should already start it right now. You know, but like, Everyone's following the journey and like, you know, trying to get the the hotel framed before winter, ah, and the road okay. just washed out. There's a huge rainstorm washed out the road. So, right? so there's a whole video about the setback, and the engagement on the video is ah, insane, right? Because it's someone on a journey to accomplish something that's incredibly difficult. This is good. So, so then, in that, if I'm going to apply that to this, there is the one journey where. I'm retreating back to the wood. You know, it's a fifth, it's 14 acre parcel. Mm-hmm. Well, that that's an interesting journey for most homesteaders right now because they're starting over. Right. So I'm talking about how we're finding the boundary line, how we're going to clear, where's a good spot for a house, passive solar design. These off grid, are we going off grid? Are we not? These types of things. Where are we, where are the pastures? Where are the gardens going to be? But if we go ghost town thing and we want people to then be more interactive in the story it's one thing to follow and relate to the new homestead story new house story it's another if we're also documenting because of our move there this becomes more public right and this becomes an airbnb mm-hmm. that we're documenting and and the cabin uh, you know, we're renovating this and it's becoming nice. This is the original farmhouse. These are the stories. Right. The old barn is not just watch Justin and his friends watch movies and premieres. It's yep. you can come. Right. Yeah, it turns it into a whole And then you have a family thing. camp, farm camp, uh, with tours. And then it's not only something they can watch then, it's actually something they can be a part of. Yeah. And I mean, running with the ghost town example. <laughs> Uh, I was there, oh, 2019 or something, 2018. Drove down with my family. There was no one else, like our our town manager wasn't there at the time. So it was my first time being there, and people were just showing up, like because it was such a popular destination, been in all the news and all this. So I'm just like giving tours, you know, and you were, yeah, and 
like I learned something on one tour. Like I'd uh, like be giving a tour and someone asked a question. I'm like, oh, I don't know. And I text Brent and be like, hey, what year was this? You know, he'd reply. And then on my next tour, I'd be like, oh, yeah, and this was in uh, 18, you know, <laughs> 72. It's like I learned that, you know, 30 minutes ago. But people love it when they can be a part of it, when they can show up in person. Yeah. And so, you know, you have to decide, is that a shift that's worth it to you? you yeah, it's a you, shift. I've been that. telling, I'm friends with Tim Schmoyer, mm -hmm. a, a YouTube video creator guy. Uh, it, we both think I'm going to have to pivot. Mm -hmm. I've been vlogging for six years. Yeah. And the YouTube space for vlogging, can you argue that it's it's not as rewarding as it was? Not right now. I mean, I'm doing as good as I ever have, but I wasn't the last two years. It was more of a progressive downhill. Uh, so we needed a pivot, but we need to pivot with something that is sustainable for me that's not. Right. Like when I tried to go to once a week, I couldn't stand it. There were so many things happening. I thought, well, that'll be my Instagram shorts or, or Instagram yeah. stories. You know, whipping out the fun of vertical videos. You just don't go back and watch it. And these are, you know what I mean? So. So you think that you're going to have to have a pivot? I do. That... And and maybe I pivoted. Maybe I found it because I, I, I happened to be vlogging one day. And I happened to tell people, I, I told the camera, I'm going to stop walking and talking so much. And I'm going to make sure when I talk, I, I'm intentional about putting on the camera. Or putting it on the tripod. And I'm not yep. going to go more than 10 seconds. And if I do, I'm telling the editor to put a strike and cut it out. And it was this fun video. I happened to go look at those comments. And everybody was like, we love to walk and talk. Don't do that. We So here I am doing this huge, this big, big extra step that I, I, I didn't mind. I don't mind the hard work. But do I even need to? And so then the pivot, and then I look back at some of our old videos and, and when we were having big growth, it was 2018, 19, what was different? The videos were all 20 minutes long. Mm -hmm. They weren't just about one thing. Because I got to the point of the plot structure like, uh, uh, and wanting it to be kind of just about one thing. Yeah. But I look back to these old videos, there's little shots of the little kids, the, uh, all these side stories thrown in. I pivot back. Mm -hmm. I put a, a try to get Rebecca to vlog some more, like she used to. But maybe there's a bigger pivot, and I want you to speak to that because you're you're going to have a totally fresh, yeah, perspective. Well, the, when you're talking about pivoting back, it made me think of in the growth of ConvertKit. We we focused on in the early days, and in the early days, we focused on everybody. Like we're, we're just email marketing platform for whoever wants it. Okay. And then we try like focusing just on authors and that wasn't quite right. And we focus on email marketing mm -hmm. for professional yeah. bloggers. And so we narrowed in on the, like this certain content creator, like professional bloggers. And we really like scaled and unlocked a lot of growth. And then we went wide again. We we're like just for creators. And you know, we're, how do we surf beginners? How do we attract more? All of this. And the last year or so we, we went back and now we're focused on email marketing for professional creators. So it's more broad yeah. than bloggers, but we're focused on that, that professional aspect because we realize that getting the top mm. people, the influencers, the, who everyone looked up to meant that everyone in that niche followed along. And so how it relates to your thing is we were always looking for, Oh, this is working. What's next. And we ended up like, moving away from what was working yeah, and mm -hmm. going to something else. And so it really resonates when you're talking about, wait, what was working before? And saying, hey, longer yeah. videos, all of that. So I think it's, you write those things down that worked and then you just make sure that if or when you pivot, you incorporate those aspects. Mm. So it sounds like from what you're learning, you're not pivoting to three minute videos. <laughs> you no. Know? You know, you might pivot and try out this whole angle of, of... I might also do three-minute videos, but they're going to be on a TikTok or something. Yeah, right. But say you're, you're going to uh, building a um, an off-grid home. Yeah, is that a... You're still going to keep, like, the the uh, vlogging, like, the longer videos, the... Certainly the kids. Your shot, style, the, the kids shots doing? of the kids. All, right, you're not In gonna, my case, I'm going to still have to show homesteading, mm -hmm. like the animals and the gardening and... Yeah, and so you're 
I guess as you make a pivot, like expect yeah. that you're going to have to reinvent yourself over time, right? This yeah. is Apple with the iPod going like the iPod is the best seller of all time, all of that. What's going to disrupt it? We have to disrupt it before someone else does, right? And they make the iPhone. Um, so the mindset of disrupting and coming up with your next pivot mm. is a good thing, but you have to keep in mind. This is a good point. That'd be like Apple like being like, we're going to disrupt the iPod and they do it with something that has terrible design. You know, yeah, that'd be them not losing intuitive. all the things that made uh, them great. That's a good point. Right? So you're saying, what is all the things that make your content great? And how do I make sure that if I make a pivot, it incorporates. And that's aspects. it too. Like if, you know, you got to think about what Morgan said, well, what, what would be your measure of success? And you got to always think, well, am I okay here? Like, mm -hmm. why do I have to continue? You know, right. I think you want growth, but you have to grow so fast. I mean, Rebecca and I do not want to be Chip and Joe where we can't go to Target or right. somewhere normal and, or, you know, Lowe's and not everybody there know us. We don't want that. Yeah, that's a hard thing to uh, uh, unwind <laughs> at some point. You know, you're so like, oh, let's, like, let's be a little less famous now. It's, it's, it's like, nice yeah. being famous in homesteading in this yeah. little niche. It's great. Right. Yeah, you're going um, to a conference this week. Yeah, because I'm shy. I'm like you. I'm not going to approach somebody. They need to approach me, and right. that's what happens. They come and approach me, and then we have a great conversation. Yeah. And it works. So, okay, so maybe that's what went wrong with the Great American Farm Tour. So uh, it's fortunate in the sense of this content creation can really – pay for pursuits if you're as long as you're adding value to people it needs to be entertaining or educational or something like that and so the youtube channel uh allowed us to go from homesteading to this great america farm tour like travel right. it's very different but what i think happened it didn't grow it i thought it could blow up our channel and i might oh. be thinking an off-grid house might blow up our channel well it might not but maybe i need to learn something from what happened on the great america farm tour i might have just learned it right now um, on the farm tour, we showed the farms. We wanted to show the farms, and, mm -hmm. and we did. We, f we showed very little of our own personal life. One, because it was hard. Yeah. Because we're in a bus, and it's we're making kids. a video every single day. We were vlogging seven days a week yeah. and traveling, and we did all of America in 10 months. Talk about relentless. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder why I'm sick now. <laughs> uh, the um, uh, so, so you're, what, I you're think the maybe I didn't stay to that core of what made it successful. Mm -hmm. I missed out on some. Maybe it was that family element. That's interesting to try and to think about, right? Because someone might go, "Okay, we're going to build an off-grid house. Let's go all the way to how-to content, right?" Yeah, and you that might just completely no. miss. And I'm thinking if I'm doing this with the in the, in the off grid house, it's gonna have to be because I told Rebecca, it's like poor thing. She's she's want this dream kitchen, and uh, she's waited so long. And talk about delayed gratification. And we're to this yeah. place where we could do it, but really to keep it moving and to make it happen, we're gonna hire a contractor. Mm -hmm. We've talked with him, but we're gonna hire a contractor that lets me work with them. Not all will. Yeah. Yep. And like, I want to be a big part of it, but I'm going to need to be able to step away and go to an appointment or whatnot, but I need to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. I need to keep the project moving and I can fill in the gaps. And I think it would be great content, but I need to, based on this conversation, include, uh, Mr. Brown, where are your shoes? That's my little kid. That was, a, that was a big story that everybody resonated with. Before chores, we're trying to find Mr. Brown's shoes. Where's the dog ball? Got to milk the cow. Everybody can relate to that, can't they? If my nine to five is building this house, a lot of people have nine to fives out there and they're still trying to homestead. Right. I think it's still important then maybe that I capture that seven to nine content. Yeah, I think so. Doing and, then, and then that the kids are involved in building the house. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah. You get the That's aspect of- That's a good point. Of, you know, what is what is Jonah doing around the farm yeah. to allow you to build the house? And then how is he involved what do you, in that? What do you do with this, Nathan? Because I go to line, I, we'll go to Homesteaders of America next week and there'll be lines to meet us. Yep. We'll, we'll just be standing there all day meeting people. It's great. We love it. But uh, 10 people, I asked, uh, I asked more than 10, but this is what it came down to at this uh, last event. I said, why did you, they'll say, oh, I love the channel. And I'll say, why'd you, uh, 
What do you love about it? Mm -hmm. Eight people said, oh, it's the family. We love to see you guys interact as a family. I like to see the kids involved. I had kids. I'm a grandparent, and I just love to see the little kids. Or I'm raising kids, or I want to have kids one day, or I love how you treat your wife, or this or that. Yeah. One of them said, identify with your illness and your struggle. And, and you know, maybe it was two, it was something like that. Only one said, I really enjoy seeing the animal systems or the... The chick shot how it works. Yeah. And that's the whole, that was the <laughs> whole title of the show. And right. while you're there, you might have a different thought on this, but my idea is that they came for the chickens and stayed for the family. Yeah, I think that's right. Is that the right approach? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. And, and it's not shifting and saying, I couldn't find my son's shoes this morning, so, you know, I, or whatever. Yeah, because you have to, I think you yeah, because a be new trying. audience isn't going to be interested in me finding s some kid's shoe. They don't care, right? But they're going to come in, you know. Like, there's a YouTube channel I can't remember. It was very small, right? But but I was doing a search the other day for. Um, uh, we were talking about building a like a cold storage room, mm -hmm. and so we were like, "Oh, are we going?" To you and Hillary, Hillary and I, yeah. Are we going to add on to our house in this way? And the kids are like, let's dig a basement. I'm like, well, you can't really. And then it got, got me down this track of like, how would you? Uh, obviously, I know it's physically possible to yeah. dig a basement under an existing house, but like not easy. And so I, I got down this rabbit hole watching a few videos on like different ways of people digging basements. Okay. So you, you get something like that where, and none of these videos were ones that made me be like, oh, I want to follow this person. Yeah, no. But you can come in from a search, right? They were probably instructional. They weren't even, they were, yeah, they, they weren't the highest quality. <laughs> you know? Okay. But um, you can get that where someone comes in for that search yeah. of you. Hey, how do you decide passive solar versus whatever else? Yeah. But then in, in your video answers, it covers you answering that as you live it out, which is way more interesting than just like talking to the camera you know, delivering, like, I researched A, B, and C, and then, you know, it's you, like, walking around the property and thinking about this, and your kids are involved. But it might, I, I think it's exactly what you're saying. If you come for a specific question, you come for the chickens and stay for the family of, like, yeah. it, the personality. Yeah, because then I'll say, well, then how did you find us? And it was like, you know, I'm searching the internet for some homesteading right. thing. They which, weren't... which might mean that you need to be more deliberate yeah. in some of your videos about the hooks that... You know, you're you're uh, you're blogging now, right? You have your team blogging, and if you're if you're doing that for search engines, which is a huge traffic source, then you have to be very deliberate with your keyword research and all of that. And so you might have to take that approach with YouTube, where one vlog a week you're trying to rank for a specific keyword. It's still 100% your style, all of that, but you're yeah. thinking about <clears throat> I want this to rank for this type. Yeah, of well, we did a uh, I did an all farm tour. Uh, okay. Just toured the whole farm. Uh, you know, I think the kids were in it here and there, you know, maybe saying, hey, you're, um, it, it took off. And it, it was a, just a very casual, like, tour type thing. And I've thought about more how, how I can do that. Um, but by the end of those, I'm like, oh, God, that was terrible. Uh, and, you know, the kids weren't necessarily involved because it was production. It was production. Yeah, and I felt like, well, there went two hours. But then it's I, okay. I, 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 so say, so, but yeah, to do that every once in a while is not hurtful. I do wonder if uh, the like yesterday's video was about I would think about castrating, but you can't show that on YouTube and stuff right. like that. So um, probably I, I wonder if one example is if I'm if if I'm gonna. Let's use a different example. Well, we'll just go with the castrating example. Um, if I'm going to show, if, if I'm going to talk about how to castrate pigs, I, there's so much I could still talk about. What age? How do you corral them? And I could pretty much talk people through it and just not show the cut and the mm -hmm. pulling out the balls. When um, you're, you're like, here's your plug. But for that's Abundance also Plus. a good. <laughs> that's also a good plug. Plug for Abundance Plus. By the way, if you want to see this blacked out part that we can't show on YouTube, go to Abundance Plus. Right. Um, then, 
and then and then and then if the title is unbelievable, I, I couldn't believe how smooth this pig castration went. And so then somebody's typing, how do you castrate a pig? And that one comes up. Well, if the morning, you know, it starts out sun rising and then I'm finding this kid's shoe and then blah, 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 there might be some, maybe there's some more attention that can be had in, in maybe the beginning of the video. It's happy day. Today we're going to, uh, yeah, we're going to castrate. But first we got to do all this. Let's go. Right. And you can also, I mean, you can switch the uh, timeline, like, you know, just like watching a movie or a TV yeah, show. It does not could, have to follow. I could put, uh, yeah, if if it happened finally in the afternoon, uh, gathering the stuff, uh, getting out there, corralling the pigs, this could all be at the top of the show. And it yeah. could maybe even go right up to the moment. That's what a movie does. We go right up to the cut, and then there's some... Transition that brings us back to the beginning of the day. Right. It'd be interesting. I'd, I'd look at what other watch. YouTubers you know are doing with the same problem. Yeah. Because um, there's got to be a lot of. I messed around problem. with that some and didn't seem like I. Because uh, it didn't seem like I could make much of a difference. Like get people. Uh, a lot of people drop in that first 15, 30 seconds is ridiculous, like 20%. Yeah. And that's normal, I'm hearing. And it's hard to. Get them past that seemingly no matter what I do. There's a guy named Flair that gets 100, 200,000 views a video almost daily. And it might have something about trying out the cheapest kayak on Amazon or something. Uh -huh. But the video is not starting out that way. It's kind of a vlog. And so you have to go to eight minutes to find it. So in some ways people are, I think they might see that this real quick that this is a vlog. Because I think people understand vlog now, or fast forward yep. to what they're looking for. Yeah, and YouTube makes that easier now, where you yeah. know it shows the. They used to not. Watch. Everybody right. used to say, "This title says you're clipping chickens' wings," but you didn't clip chicken wings till eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, I even had somebody in the comments say, "If you came here for the wild horses, this wild we saw these wild horses in California." If you came here for the wild horses, it's at eight, and they timestamped it so people could <laughs> link, link, yeah. link, link, link to it. Great, <laughs> solving those problems. Yep. Where do you want to go with this? Well, we're about done, so um, let me make sure. Is there anything else you want to add? We got about five, five-ish minutes. What would have to be true for? Yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, so I think for, for people wanting to scale, and it applies to me, it applies to them, that you look at what YouTube's rewarding or the platform's rewarding. You look at, like, YouTubers rewarding extravagance, the Mr. Beast types, the Ryan Trahans, these these big experiments, these big giveaways, these things, these big dares. Right. Um, but, but for me, they're also, YouTube also rewards long videos. And I've heard that from a lot of people, right? They're opt yeah. The internal team at YouTube is optimizing for watch time. And so, so if I love your video and it's three minutes long, like that's just not very much watch time. But if it's 25 minutes long. Yeah. Uh, and I might have hit my mark. You know, you want you don't want to go too far. Yeah. You need to keep a 50% retention. And, you know, with these shorter 10, 12-minute videos, I was at 70%, mm -hmm. which is really good. And now we're at like 50 to 60. And so I would think, well, maybe I, maybe every video needs to be 30 minutes. No, because I'm getting to that. So YouTube will stop off. pushing it out if you get to that mm -hmm. certain retention. So I think mixing it up and doing something different like this house thing could be. And and I, I so it would, and the question is, how involved am I? I could hire a contractor and just keep on doing the homestead stuff and check in on it. Yeah, or I could actually do the work itself, and that could be more exciting for yeah. viewers. I think and, I would focus on being a man on a journey. What yeah. is what is the obstacle you're trying yeah, that's to overcome? Good. What in a relatable way? You know what? What's an outcome? If I'm watching today, what am I seeing you I struggle like with to try to accomplish that a year from now I'm gonna? Yeah. You know, see you living in the house, right? You know, and I need to be okay with the man being on this epic journey. 
I think The Rock does this really good. He he is very relatable, but yet he's the most famous, mm-hmm. one of the most richest people in the world. Um, it needs to be okay that I'm go- going beyond what a typical homesteader would do. That that my journey is creating a legacy property for my children, right? Which means a thriving business on farm, mm-hmm. a weekend restaurant that ends up being a, a restaurant in town that ends up being a hundred food trucks across the country at all these right. uh, at all these events, right? Uh, a pork a, a pork rind business. That's right. Uh, pork rind a, a pork stick yeah. business. Um, that needs to be okay. Mm-hmm. For, I need to give myself permission to do that. That Airbnbs, a community and event center. But I need to still. Uh, I'll, I'll, what my struggle will then be, which The Rock has done well, is how do I then still make it valuable for the audience to follow along? Yeah, I think people worry too much about making it relatable. Uh, uh, I see this in the woodworking yeah, okay. community. Someone will start a woodworking channel and it'll be like, hey, I'm only doing it with tools that, okay, you know, it's, that it's everybody like this can in homesteading. Have. Yeah. And I think. You know, you try to have, um, maybe you have a tractor that like yeah. someone else isn't going to be able to have. But like the other day, <laughs> when we were out here on Sunday, right? You're looking for the pin to connect the trailer to the, uh, you know, to the little razor, and you can't find it. You know, or the, or you find one that works, but then yeah. we all pile in and it's like touching the ground. Yeah, yeah. You know, Rebecca's like, "There's no way this is real. Yeah, it'll be fine." She's like, "No, literally, it's touching the ground." Yeah, right. like that's super relatable, and that you're gonna is. have all these relatable right. moments. That's true. In the pursuit of something, even though that's less relatable, somebody, it, it was a long time. I didn't even have a side by side. Yeah, that we were just farming with a wheelbarrow and one electric knife. But yeah, that's a good point. So even though we had a side by side, yep, and even friends to come help, it's still relatable, right? Because we can't find the bolt. <laughs> There's that moment in there, and so I think when people try too hard to make it relatable, it becomes inauthentic, because then you're not uh, living your life. Your life is moving up. If someone wants to go have the most relate, like relate to you at their stage like how, how do you do this in the early stages of the, of the homestead you know how do you do this when you don't have money they can go watch Great. the early vlog <laughs> they can go watch vlogs <laughs> 100 to 300 you yeah know? um there, there's all of that for them no, that's so good. keep it authentic i like you. that it, it you you bring that out that it takes away from the authenticity because you can worry about one thing you, you want it to be so relatable but then you're not authentic and then it's not real and f- fun yeah. for anybody anymore and then people see that oh yeah I think it'd be fascinating to have you do a video and maybe you have in smaller chunks of like, what could the farm be? You know, and you're like sitting down at the kitchen mm. table and you're sketching yeah, it out good. and you're like, it could be this. And well, what happens if this development happens up the road? What happens if, yeah. you know, all of these, okay, we go across, what are our different ideas? And you pull people in on that and you're like setting the stage early for Well, this that's good. Journey. Like, you know, if this were development, we're going and, this is going to then be me, the, the journey. I'm this guy on this journey who right. had this vision to have this legacy property, ideally isolated and quiet. And, dead end road. <laughs> and now here's this problem. Right. And we don't have a dead end road anymore. How are we going to turn that problem into a solution? Mm-hmm. Well, here I'm, you know, here are my ideas. Here's, here's going to be my obstacles. About it. I'm torn about it. Right. Uh, do we move? Do we yeah. start over? Do we stay? Do we dig in? Do we just move to a different location on the farm? Mm-hmm. Is it really that bad, you know, having the traffic? Or or what if I create such a business down here? We have more traffic than they do. Right. Yeah. It, I think um, going to the what would have to be true question, like an angle of that that I would take is what would have to be true so that five years from now, okay. we look at this new development as a huge blessing. Yeah, okay. You know, and at first you're like, there's no way. Like, there's no, we don't want that. Our vision is this. This is where we're going. That's a good And then you go, okay, but what, maybe we do want to create this whole destination and there's nowhere for people, like we can't possibly have enough um, for people to stay. You, but there's this beautiful development that went in up the road. 
And you might not feel yeah. any of that now, but just asking that question of like, that's a um, good point. There's a question. Shoot, I don't even know where right. I got this from. But asking, how is this a gift? Right, as you're struggling with something, <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah, even in things that you might not expect at all, right? <laughs> like a little problem of no, I get you. How I, is this I a figured gift? Out, I sat down and figured out how Lyme disease is a gift. Mm, yeah, finally, I came to thank it. Wow, because it's brought so much blessing. Yeah, I mean that's an Even incredible I wouldn't world. Be sitting here talking about Lyme disease. Yeah, I wouldn't have created content. <laughs> I would have true. kept hustling. Lyme disease forced you to find dumpsters. leverage. Yeah, because it's not possible. Without. Yeah, yeah. Ha- ask how is that a gift? It's it's a lot like uh, this. Is, this is a great ending segment. This this whole talk. Uh, the a, a lot of uh, what do you say? What, what's your question? What would you have to be true for? That's a lot like uh, Daniel Pink's book. Did you read that? Sell to sell as I human. I have. It's so good. I'll read it. Uh, um, you don't. If you don't get anything out of it, here's the one cliff note you want from it. You don't. Add, you don't say can't. You can't. Instead, and, and he his point was you don't. The the good self talk isn't. I can do this. Let's do it. We that's bad self talk. The good self talk is instead say, how can I? Right. Not I can't. Yep. How can I? So you know, uh, a mentor, Joel Salatin, asked his his, his distributor for his book. He's going to come out with his book. Fell through, and he just had this whimsical thought of, oh, maybe Justin can do it. Justin, will you do it? Sure, I'll do it. And I thought in my head, you know, I'll mention a vlog, sell a couple hundred. It was going to be a ninety dollar design book, and um, he, and later he emailed me and said, I'm counting on you for a thousand. And I'm like, I'm just getting a relationship with this mentor. I don't want to let him down. He's, he obviously thinks very high on me. I can't do it. Finally, I said, how can I? Mm-hmm. And I wrote all, all different kinds of ways and ideas, you know, bonuses for it, the tears, the um, content. Oh, I'll go to his farm and we'll create content around it and this and that. Well, 8,000 books. <laughs> Half a million dollars. That's amazing. Yeah. So that is the same thing as what would be true for. Maybe you, you get a different angle or specifics out of yeah, that. It's a, how versus can I? Well, how can I? And then make yourself write six different. Th- I think that was the premise of Daniel Payne. I think he said, write six ways, answer that question. And four of them are going to be so stupid. Right. Rob a bank. But write it down. Rob a bank is one way. Yeah. And you, I mean, you end up with these things because it, it, it just, it shifts you from your current reality, your current limitations into something totally different. You know, we do it like, what would have to be true to get Tim McGraw as a customer of ConvertKit? And like, oh, that'd be ridiculous. Tell me that story. So how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> that one actually turned out to be really simple. This is a true story. Yeah. That was, you know, we're thinking about we want to get into music. Yeah. We, as we get into blogging and, and podcasts, right, we always get... We just went, we went right to the top, huh? We just get a couple, like, flagship people. Right, you get Pat Flynn and a whole bunch of people are like, what is Pat using? From use? the business space with Pat All Flynn. That, right. So you want the same thing in music. And um, there's a principle that we use in, in uh, like business development sales. Uh, I call it the right-hand man principle. You want to reach uh, Tim Ferriss? Really hard to do. Oh, he's really, he's really adamant about like not answering no, emails. No, and... don't do that. <laughs> but he's got a right-hand guy. Yeah. Right. Gary Vaynerchuk, whoever else. Right. They yeah. Have. Text him. Probably text him multiple times a day. <laughs> but like, you can figure out. Okay, where does that person live? Who are they friends with? How do I get? Like, they are very. They're so much easier to good. get to. Mm-hmm. And so it was the same thing with Tim McGraw. Was like, okay, well, who runs digital for Tim McGraw? It's a person named Brian who lives in Nashville. You know, who how'd do you I... find that? Out? Uh, how'd you find that out? I mean, you just start digging, right? You okay. learn that, okay, Tim McGraw... Um, you could probably find out his agent. Yeah, so you go, to, you go to an agent. Though an agent's used to dealing with tons of inbound requests, right? Um, and being like, no, no, <laughs> you yeah. know, all of that. But like you sort of go on LinkedIn, or you, you find, really it's, you find out that Tim McGraw runs his own label, right? And that label has actually seven other artists on it, okay? And then you look up, go on LinkedIn, who... Who works at that label? Oh, here's the VP of digital. Go on LinkedIn. Who do I know that knows them? 
you know, you start to work a few layers back and was able to get an intro to them. And then, and then the trick is, uh, you go, Hey, I'm going to be in Nashville on, uh, I'm or planning a trip to Nashville. I'll be there on these days or these days. Do either one work for you to meet up? Uh, I did this with another blogger, uh, in New York at one point. And what they do is they, they say either, neither one works, you know, and they're like, they don't want to meet or they go, yeah, this, you know, first week of September works that you suggested. Sure. And then you plan and book the trip. So I did this. I wanted to meet Ramit Sethi. Um, mm-hmm. uh, he was in New York and he had said something like, Hey, next time you're in New York, like happy to meet up as like an offhand comment once in an email. And so I was talking to my friend Ryan and he was like, and I just said like, yeah, well, I mean, next time I'm in New York, I'll, I'll do that. And Ryan's like, that's the reason to go. You plan a trip yeah, for that. And so he taught me to like throw out two dates and say, Hey, I'm going to be in New York to meet with, you know, a customer or whoever else. Like it'll be either this day or this day. Does either one work better for you? And they will say, yeah, this one does. And then you plan the whole trip. And then you think about, okay, now that I'm in New York or Nashville or wherever I'm going, who are the 10 other people that I want to meet? And that like being in your city turns into a thing from there. Yeah. So that's how we made the connection to Brian, who heads up digital for Tim McGraw, and then won him over. Did he not have an email list already? No, they did. It was just on MailChimp. And it Dang. Have been so that's, that's prime. <laughs> yeah. and Somebody so the, with a lot of emails on MailChimp. Yeah. And so you Easy, work, right? work backwards, right? And you're like, what would have to be true to get Tim McGraw as a customer? And it's like, well, you need to, you don't need to convince him. You need to convince this other person. Who is that That's other right. person? And you break down you know, and find it. People are missing out on this. It, I, haven't, I haven't even experienced people wanting to try to approach me. And I've even put my, like, I want, how did I get Joel Salatin in my very first film? I have seven people on my email list going to this thing, going into this Kickstarter, whatever. S- how do I get Joel Salatin? Well, uh, in a roundabout way, I found out how much he charges for a speaking event. I divided that for a day, so I divided that by eight and got a one hour. Mm-hmm. And then I and then my pitch was my pitch was going to be, uh, oh, and I read that Noah Kagan thing on OK Dork on how to write an email, yeah, cold email. You spend an hour on it, but they can read it in less than a minute. Here are the five points. I've used that cold email so many times. <laughs> uh, and Joel will come to you. Right. We'll give you. X amount of money. We just want one hour. And then if it's cool with you, we'll follow your interns and get some shots doing chores. You don't have to use one hour interview. What did he say to that? He emailed me back and said, I'll give you two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I he just that. ends up being a generous guy. Yeah. Now I know him enough. I think he'll he'll take any interviews that come on the farm and he's good publicity, I think. I don't, I'm right. not sure. But the point is... <clears throat> Why you all you find a way to serve them too? Like if you're if somebody's wanting to reach out for a shout out or something like that. Well, if I want to be involved with Joel and have a relationship with Joel, I'm hiring him. Right. What what does he want? What is if you you could go further with Tim McGraw if that didn't work? You could become a sponsor of something or whatever he's doing. Like if I wanted to get a hold of Alex Steele, some blacksmith guy on the YouTube, Mm -hmm. and end up doing some collab with him because I think blacksmith audience, that might be a real good crossover between homesteading and a lot of each other haven't heard each other. That might be a good collab, right? What would I do? I I think I would start by trying to sponsor his show. I know he takes sponsors. Mm -hmm. Or I can do what you said and try to find a roundabout. You also need to be clear. You need to say, Joe, I want one hour. It's X amount of money. Here's the dates. Don't like, I want to get on the phone. We got to... Yeah, yeah. Chat and figure this out. Come to them with a clear yes or no. Yeah. Here's the amount of money. Here's the time. Yes or no. And then I think if you know what they want, right? In the blacksmith case, if if you know that his biggest goal yeah. is to grow his audience, then you're like, look, all the yeah. video is going to go to my audience of a million people. You know, like that's right. If if you good. see that he is doing some fundraiser. He's mm-hmm. passionate about getting water right. to kids in Kenya. Yep. And you notice that if you contribute ten thousand dollars, you get to go to a VIP dinner with him. Right. 
uh, this is just a wild example. And then if that 10,000 is worth it to you and your project, that's a way to meet them. Right. Yeah, you find. And then it's not you. Remember you were going to walk up on those guys? Oh, hey, guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. What would work better, doing that cold as a fan or 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 being recognized by that? Right. Because you were the speaker or something. Well, you that's know what I mean? I mean, that's the ultimate. <laughs> like, you take content creation all the way through. Like, on one hand, you know, someone shows up to, um, like, the Homesteaders of America conference, right? And they have their own channel. It's got 25,000 subscribers on it. It's a tiny channel compared to yours. Or maybe it's got 5,000, right? Yeah, which is enough, by the but way. It, and that, that's where someone's like, oh, maybe I've seen, seen that. Or you start to, you're in those circles a little bit. And that's huge. It makes a big difference at conferences. But then you get to the point where it's like, hey, uh, I have this experience. You know, can I teach a workshop at the conference? Now, all of a sudden, I'm not on your level, but I'm in the end at the speaker's dinner. Yeah. You know, and then it's it's not the 10,000 fans trying to talk to you. It's like, we're it's in the group even, of 25 speakers. I mean, how bad do you want it? Get, get in the speaker's venue by going to the organizer and say, this is my YouTube channel. This is what I can offer. These are the these are three different types of class. I noticed you didn't have any classes on canning. I'm actually right. been canning for five years. I've got some content on my YouTube channel. We're getting some traction. I can do canning co- classes for you. And and I'm just starting out, so I'm willing to come and speak for nothing or for a hundred bucks. Yep. Or you just c- cover my travel, and I think my travel will be five hundred dollars or or whatever. It and that's your way to get in. Yeah. To talk to Joe. Yeah, it's huge. Or like hosting a meetup, right? Okay. There's always at a conference, uh, depending on the type of event. Yeah. But a lot of the business events that I go to, yeah. you know, there's two days of programming and people are coming in, say, uh, opening parties at 6 p.m. Yeah. People are landing at like noon onwards. And so they have this time of like, oh, what am I going to do? I registered and now what? Right. If you're hosting an event for 25, 30 people, which is a, just a, uh, a, a meetup. That's right. Right. Hey, this is the YouTubers at the financial blogging conference. At- you can even say, yeah, like if you went to VidCon, like this huge thing, um, you could get niche mm-hmm. and say, I invited all the financial YouTubers. YouTubers. Yeah. I've invited, here's the list of the invitees. It, it, you're not even saying, Rem, uh, I just throw, Ramit said he's coming. I mean, yeah. he's a financial guy. So, uh, you know, you're not even right. saying that. You're saying he's been invited. Well, what's interesting, if, actually, if, <laughs> you, you threw out VidCon. You could go to VidCon, which, you know, the, the celebrities at VidCon have 10 million, 25 million yeah. subscribers and up from there. And so you could be the one to connect all the uh, homestead, you know, yeah, traditional you skills people. Like, yeah. And I'm hosting this meetup, and then you're like, hey, I've got these people, and you're going to the blacksmith right. guy, and you're like, hey, I Cause saw you were coming. Come on out. You may be nobody at this point, mm-hmm. but if you, if you were organizing at this conference and you said, I've invited Ramit Sethi and Seth Godin, mm-hmm. well, those two, those two are going to maybe want to meet each other. Right. Yeah, you can be the connector. Yeah. Redmond's Salt Company hosted a dinner Thursday night hey we don't have to cook it's gonna be good clean meat grass fed meat yeah we're going and they invited uh, you know I'm sure Joel Salatin and uh, Jessica Sowers or whoever right and it ends up being this neat little networking event but of course the host has access to all those people right. uh, the organizer of Homesteaders of America um, has access to all those people yeah, there's two events that I went to. I was thinking of um, there's a guy named Michael Stelzner who runs a conference uh, called Social Media Marketing World mm-hmm. that I went to a bunch of times um, in San Diego at the San Diego Convention Center. And he's giving this talk called uh, titled The State of Social Media. Mm. You know, it's like the state of the union for social media. And I remember sitting there going like, well, who decided that Michael's the guy? Yeah. There's like 2,000 people in the audience all watching him. Be like, here's this is what's going on social media. These are the trends <laughs> and all that. And I'm like, what imparted, you know, who said he's the guy who, you know, yeah. elected him, whatever else. It's like, 
No, he just did. Yep. He, <laughs> he's like Michael decided. He's like, I'm I'm the guy, and I got all of you to come. Yep. And you know, it was a great talk, a great and event. But yeah. The 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 way he did that, the way he declared that is hit publish. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You wanna be the be the the goat the goat lady? You wanna be the crazy goat lady? Just start hitting publish on <laughs> surrounding goat content. Yeah, and then you pull other people into it. You get yeah. an audience. And I started out as the chicken man, you know. I, it was all chicken content. People can relate. Everybody, you know, a lot of people have them. That was what I was best at at the time. And and put out chicken content. Mm -hmm. But if I want to transition to uh, a little more broad, what do I do? I just start talking about the rest of the homestead. And now I'm the homestead guy. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. All right. So to sum it up, <laughs> let's ask what would what would have to be true. What would have to be true for blank? Yeah, don't say can't. Say how can I? Right. Produce a thousand words a day. Show up consistently on that, whatever that your thing is. Consistent content doesn't have to be necessarily writing. It could be mm -hmm. uh, podcasting or video. Uh, there's no reason somebody couldn't make a vertical video every day. Oh, yeah. Put it on Reel, put it on TikTok. Yep. Uh, there's no reason somebody couldn't do an Instagram story or even turn your in, do an Instagram story style YouTube video. Hey, you know we're 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 doing a fun interview here. This is what we learned today. Keep it 15 second clip, mm -hmm. and then just uh, what uh, doesn't take long. Four clips is a minute. Right. So to have a 10 minute video, what's that? 40 clips? So 40 interesting things throughout the day. Very little editing. You can edit Premiere Rush apps on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at this point, there's really, if that, if being a content creator is what you want to do, there's really no excuse not to do it today. But I see more and more. I, I'm thinking the future is everybody's going to be a content creator. It's going to be very helpful. Yeah. Let's see. Everyone's gonna be a content. Maybe that's I strong. disagree with that. Let me think about why. I I think the reason I disagree mm -hmm. is because very few people understand leverage, and very few people mm. are relentless. Ah. And so I I actually think true. that mountain to climb between where you are today and actually being a successful content creator is very hard, and most people are are not willing to put in the effort. Ah, uh, that's true. May okay. Wonder if. I think. Success is going to be wrapped up more mm -hmm. in content creation. I think so. Like with what The Rock has done. Yeah. Because you're going to get to this point where even if you have attention, you can you can point it towards yeah. anything. If you pivoted today and you're like, look, I'm yeah. going to, <laughs> this is not a good, good example, but <laughs> you know, you're like, I'm going to become the leading manufacturer of chickshaws where people are going to just buy them, Yeah, you know, <laughs> for... Five hundred dollars and it's shipped out and it's a full kit, right? You could build an entire business around that. Yeah, we probably get into it. It's like that's not the business that you should build, yeah. but but you know, right? You have the audience where you could, yeah, you could launch that whole thing. Yeah, and there's plenty of ways to make money offline and surrounding mm -hmm. uh, around content and and scale and be. There's plenty of billionaires without right. any social media. Any but, one of these people, maybe a better example, right? Is uh, like greenhouses, like a kit greenhouse. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone said had a great design that they made that they loved, yeah, they could become a manufacturer of that, and you could build, and you know, a fifty and, million and dollar year business. I think it would houses. be even better business if their content, if they're creating content around that process. Yep. Yeah, because then you're like, here's why I buy, yeah, from this company. Someone's like, oh, you got your greenhouse. I'm like, yeah, it's from this company. Here's what's great about. Like, I'm going into all yeah. the details because I've watched 25 videos about how these yeah. greenhouses are made. Yep. You know, I'm now like the best advocate they could ever yeah. hope for. Yeah, content's wild. Yep. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Where are folks going to find you? Where's your content at? Uh, I blog uh, at nathanberry.com. Yeah. I have a podcast. Uh, just search Nathan Berry. And, oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, I don't do a ton with the podcast, but but yeah, and then ConvertKit's just at ConvertKit.com. Okay.